Yes. All right. All right. Hi, Vince. Bye. Hey. Hey. As normal, we start three years later. <laughs> now I'm going to have my birthday taco. Yeah, you got yeah. birthday yeah. taco. Yeah, the beans are cold. Welcome yeah. to the Rock and Tour Society's Tuesday night. Tonight is Mike's birthday. Yay. Hey. Mike just turned 5,000 years old. I'm Mark Scott. <laughs> Which means he's older than Mel Brooks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so tonight we're streaming on something. Tonight we're streaming on Facebook and TikTok only. We don't have anything else going on right now. Next few weeks though, we'll be hitting our Twitch stream and getting it going as well as some other things. So if you're on TikTok, you joined us at six. If you're on Facebook, you joined us a little after nine eight thirteen a.m. <laughs> Normal start time. We always say six ish on our start times because, well, computers. Anyway. Well, computers. Yeah, but tell him, Rob, tell him the good news next week. <laughs> next week, Mike's going to do the whole thing nude. Yeah. Oh, I've been so, waiting for that. I know, right? So turn in about 10. Yeah, for every like we get, we're going to put uh, fly <laughs> scripts on them. <laughs> <laughs> but we play all kinds of tabletop games because there's just so many out there in the world to enjoy. <laughs> That's our little niche on the internet streaming system is we you can kind of tune in and see all kinds of different games. Go to our YouTube channel through our link tree. You'll see the videos that we've already done and all the different, video, all the different games are in those videos in a playlist. So go check those and a lot of our games are older games too so yeah because we're old yeah, yeah. Cause we're old because we're, 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 yeah. we're new we're old yeah, yeah. we're old we don't want to buy any new anything new hey, <laughs> damn it damn it can't teach a new old game of Mr. Dragon, i remember when it was actually real dragons <laughs> Uh, as we left off for uh, last time, uh, you guys were leaving Nashville. Uh, Cobb and um, Olaf stayed behind Bye, in Nashville to do some stuff. You uh, went to go visit the uh, um, the Swedish girl, or whatever. So yeah, I went to go help help some of the people that were in need, stuff like that. So, um, you guys have uh, <laughs> tinkers. <laughs> general visiting of the tinkers. Inventors. Uh, uh, um, do you guys know what you're at for breakfast tomorrow? Ooh, what do you have for breakfast tomorrow? Dozy dozy. Oh, wow. oh. Uh, so you guys continued on your way to Memphis. And until you got to just outside of White Bluff. Bye, bye. Bye, uh, and that's when you heard some wailing sounds. Oh. And you guys went to go investigate up in the uh the uh, hollow oh, woods. Oh, <laughs> and you came across the cabin and had the four dead children. Or three dead children. Oh yeah, about three in three. the cabin. Oh, that disturbing. And then one was in the barn. The 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 mother, two of the children the were in the cabin, boy. and then one in the barn. Yeah, we are over eighteen. It does get a little graphic. Yes, yeah, so we are an eighteen plus screen when you get that out of there right now. So there's going to be a lot of inappropriate humor. There's no yeah, in all right. language. Yeah, yeah. Um, all language. And then you had heard uh, you had heard some of that crying again. That was more like a well, more like a human sound, like a man. Right. And you had heard, heard it once before too, but now you kind of heard it again. It was across the field, for away from the cabin and everything. Uh, Kelvin and Manuel, you'd ran out there, and basically it looked like it oh, was shit, uh, was on here. The farmer, yeah. Oh boy. The, you, the yeah, farmer yeah, was yeah. out there, and it looked like he was about ready to commit suicide. And you guys prevented him from blowing his head off with a shotgun. Right. Um, you guys were kind of following to catch up uh, when you saw a spectral spirit kind of come in through the barn. It kind of visited that first body, and then it went through the house, and it right. went and visited each of those bodies, and they came out to the front. And uh, about the time that they were saving that guy, uh, okay. you guys were trying to talk to it, I think. <clears throat> yeah. And then it stitched something on the wall. Um, well, uh, cheat death. Yeah, you cannot cheat death. Did you need the dry erase board for this? Uh, not right now. We'll just, we'll, we'll wing it. Okay. So, um, it shouldn't take that long, so. Manuel did most of the work. Right. So light work. Uh what you two hadn't noticed when you started running back out to the field to catch up to those two. Oh yeah. Is that there was some livestock off to the side of the barn and they were had all been slaughtered. And as you were starting to run across the field, basically a big old bear came up behind you. And it was basically kinda of like a, a Ned Bear of yeah. some sort. 
Yeah. And uh, so you guys it, kind it of thought, it was that arrow fight, yeah. uh, It kind of gave you a swipe, but you spent chips. Mike was tickling its testicles. <laughs> Trying to fist it. Yeah. <laughs> Doing something with his weird magic. That's why it's harrowed. I keep telling you, it's not something to play with. But that bear was. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Manuel and uh, Kelvin, uh, they encountered somebody. Uh, Lilith had told you there was somebody watching you. And I shot somebody and you saw it. Now. You saw it up on the ridge line. You shot it, and then it just kind of went back down behind the hill, and you declined to go follow it. So you guys went over, back over to them, where you saw the bear. You were carrying the farmer. Right. And then the um, Indian attacked me and almost shot my head off. Yeah, and then uh, Manuel helped you guys kill off the bear. Ron, you got to bring it down because I don't hear you at all. Your microphone's pointing oh. up to your shoulder, so. <laughs> your ear. I it's, can't hear it. It's not an ear thing. I don't know what's going on. Um, there you go. Yeah, basically, as they were fighting the bear, it had that's come, that's uh, the figure that you had saw had come back around. And snuck up behind you and basically tried to whop you up across the head, and you basically spent chips to barely right. miss that and everything. It. That blew his knee off. Um, yeah, you shot it, and then uh, Manuel came, and I think he hit it once. No. Uh, or no, did he dodge? No, no, he didn't. He didn't go over there yet. He was dealing with the bear. Oh, was he still over by the bear? Yes, when I got attacked. Uh, okay. Yeah. I think so. he just dropped the bear. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, yeah, you did. You shot it in the the left leg. Yep. And then you've got you've shot him before in the upper guts. Okay. So that was who I shot him originally. Yeah. Okay. So now you still have the guy. Other color. Yeah. So you still have the guy. How were, did you drop I, him? I dropped or? him. Okay, okay, you dropped him. Okay. So and like now break, we'll go to here. uh quickness. Okay. For everybody? Everybody. Except for Manuel, who suddenly... Apache pink eye. Yeah, Apache <laughs> pink eye. Disappeared into the woods. I got a pee! <laughs> Do we have an action deck? Yeah, let's eat it. Shit. Um, Holy fuck. What did you do? I just popped three times in a row. Yeah, I got 58. I got wow. like 56. Old. <laughs> Thank goodness, the quickness, we're just drawing the cards right now, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm getting five cards. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. So in this deck, the red joker, the joker word is in red. The other one's yellow, so. I don't want a red joker. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Oh, I want a black joker. That's yeah. I always get the black joker. I want a black joker. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. I want safeties. Pasties? You should get taco pasties. Taco pasties. Mm. Mike, get off the right at the table! Twirly. <laughs> we told you about this. I've got pasties. We're not paying you to do that. I've got pasties. I still Jake from last time. Stop it. I can't help it. Okay, so you get five cards? Five, yes. One, two, three, four, five. Who is next? Would you have both? 28. Okay, that would be you. Sweet. All five aces. Two, three, four, five. That's why we don't cheat in this game. <laughs> and then just me, I guess. So. Okay. So the way in this game that we do initiative, if you're following, if you're familiar with Dungeons and Dragons and things like that, is a quickness roll, and the quickness roll translates into how many playing cards you get. Yes. Now, I should point out, this is not Savage Worlds. Now, there's Deadlands Reloaded, which is Savage Worlds, mm -hmm. which is much simpler. We're playing Deadlands Classic, the original. Right. The better so, one. Yeah. It's 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 much more detailed. So, yeah, your, your quickness total for your initiative determines how many playing cards you get. So, when you're ready to grow up from Reload, you, go, you can yeah, go, back yeah. go back to Classic. Go back to Classic. Yeah, Classic is awesome. So, the card 
cards dictate in the order, of course, numerical order, in which way it goes. So aces being first down to two. To deuce. Yep. To deuce. So that's that determines initiative. It determines okay. initiative. And there's nothing quite like, you know, Savage World, you get one card, but there's nothing quite like playing Deadlands when you have a handful of cards and a bunch of poker chips. Yeah. It's like perfect Western stuff. Yep. So uh, aces. Who's going to lead us off? No aces? Mike's busy playing with himself. Yeah. He's checking under the hood. How's the... Oh, Jesus. How's the transmission down there? <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Did you get that bear's testicles yet? <laughs> no, but I'm about to become a queen. Nobody's got mine. About to change well, his oil. Queen. Okay, well, I have a king. Oh, okay. Yeah. I guess king comes first, so... King. Uh... So I bear, believe you guys were like 20 yards away. Right. And the bear is down, was. but... The bear is down. Last la last round, I think you guys emptied bullets into his head. Yeah. So I'm Here, Mike. probably reloading oh, my gun. <laughs> taking time to reload and <laughs> taking a look around and see what's going on. Okay. You start to reload, and you do see Kelvin over there. Okay. Um, I, I can't remember. D did you? Did I not say you guys didn't see him over there? Or I don't remember. Maybe not. But maybe I, I that's why you fired know. at the I think bear. He was further away. Okay. It was dark. You do see Kelvin over there, and you see actually you see behind him, uh, you see uh, a farmer. It looks like not not a very or you know unusual right. looking man. Um, he farmer. seems pretty hysterical, and you can kind of see he's kind of dragging himself up and kind of trying to run away from him. But in front of him, facing him, you see basically um, a figure. It looks like he's like some sort of Native American, basically. Okay. He had short, coal black hair, and his face has been kind of painted white, black, and then like a, a yellow. Okay, like, like a stripes. Stripes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and he had like a... Um, he wasn't exactly dressed all the way in complete. He's a fan of the Steelers. Like Native American <laughs> clothes. Um, Could be the Raiders. He had like buckskin. Well, I had buckskin trousers. And then um, uh -huh. uh, a shirt, like a, a white man shirt, you know, yeah. European shirt style. Right. And then, but on top of that, he had like an unusual chest piece, whatever that, you know. Oh, like the beaded see, armor. Yeah, the beaded thing. armor, whatever that's okay. made out of. Uh, I'm going to use this. And you can see he is armed with a, with a tomahawk and everything. Okay. I'm going to use this to try and speed loop. Okay. So, let's see. And I can't remember. Target number is... How does that work for speed loop? How many are you trying to load? You can do two, I think two, at difficulty five, or you can do three at difficulty seven. I'll try for three. Yeah, eight. Okay, so you slam in three rounds real quick. Okay. Um, any other kings? Hi, my name is Rob, and I like to eat tacos whenever it's Mike's birthday. <laughs> that's Sometimes un that's I unusual. Eat Mike <laughs> on his birthday. Wait. It's a delay, so. I'm working on the railroad all the long day. <clears throat> Mike's both our cameraman and our sound guy. And our promotions and our stunt performer. <laughs> stunt performer. Stunt doc. Stunt. What now? <clears throat> By the grace of God, I have heard your words, Brad. A queen. Unless there's any other queens. Queens. Uh, I am uh, basically looking at this here creature and determining what kind of bear it is. Okay, well, go ahead and roll your cog. Difficulty. <laughs> it's a koala with a pituitary. Uh, <laughs> it's so Probably cute, a but... difficulty seven. Why do I smell cough drops? I got a, I got a, me an eight there, Mr. Okay. Yeah. Well, as you kind of, you guys have just kind of emptied your pistols into it, and you're now just kind of looking at it and everything, and you do notice uh, it's a movement going out the end of the field. And basically, you can't see what was going on over there. Oh, sweet mother of heaven. So there was a gun. Can I still do something? Or I will allow you to still do something. Um, I'm going to say you'll be at a minus two penalty, though. <laughs> one, of Kelvin, one of Kelvin's dragoons went off, so they probably grab your attention pretty quick. Well, I'm going to. Well, we were shooting at the bear, too. Right. Yeah, there's a whole lot of shooting going there's on. There's a whole lot of shooting going on. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to basically load... And I, I have quick draw, but I, I don't have speed load. So basically, I just one bullet, one bullet. Direction. You quick draw that bullet and toss it. Yeah, I had it there. <laughs> 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 I 
Nice. So what are you doing? I'm, I'm reloadable. Oh, oh my god, god. I can throw my taco. Oh. Uh, okay, you failed to reload your gun. You had too much. Mm -hmm. round. I've had too many tacos. Put that beer down. I need to I need uh, paper, paper towels. towels. Stat. Paper towels. Thank you. Oh, it put stat. So now, actually, how many is it? One round per per bullet. I think it's case. normally one round for unless you have a bullet because yeah, you know, especially the old culture, yeah. open it and then put a bullet in and rotate the chamber and yeah, do all that. Okay, so you're reloading then. So Queen Jack, Jack, what are you doing? <clears throat> well, I hit him in the leg. I want to ready to fire on a dragon's one half, so I cock the gun again, right? It's single fire? I don't do it that way. Yeah, no. Yeah. Single fire is just different. once per round. Okay. You do it. Well I'm gonna I'm gonna jerk my uh, what? <laughs> All right, we don't have time for that. <laughs> I'm gonna pull my bowie knife and then start walking up towards him and shoot at the same time. Okay. Um since you're you're doing one action and you're doing another mm -hmm. i'm gonna give you a minus two that's fine so your difficulty is going to be seven on uh shooting right yep and give me your total <laughs> 15 altogether. 15? Okay. Oh, oh what well, are you going to do it, boss? He will try and the moose dodge. Uh -huh. I'm going to refill my top. Probably it's going to be a waste. That's a good idea. Are doing the moose or fear? It's refilling. It's refilling. Oh, my God, you're talking about he tries kind of to try to do like another roll thing because I think he did a roll somewhere where he yeah he tries kind of do something like that again but he fails so you will hit roll your location location is going to be twenty okay so that's five d six the head tab one two three four five d six so. I'm going to hit location chart at 20 of the head. Mm -hmm. Over there. And because he hits in the head, he gets two extra dice. To the and these don't pop, though, right? Don't yes, they do. Directly in the eye. Okay. Hold on. Let me do some magic here. That's an eye. Look at you, close. He just got a 20 hit location. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Witness this. What happened? It popped again. Wait, that's me. Yep, I see it. Okay. No, oh, yeah, it was for Breeze. Oh, it's so nice. Witness me. Yes, I will. Yes, you're very nice and fresh. But the holiday spirit. 41 all together. 41. So that's 6, 12, 24, 30. Okay. Uh, you basically kind of pull out that bowie knife and you start walking forward and you kind of not even really aiming but you're just giving a nice good white herb yeah, stand I'm, in the river type thing yeah, and you kind of basically fire and it plunges right into the middle of his head and he drops to the ground kelvin is pissed uh both of you guys kind of see that okay He's pulling a copperhead. Kelvin. Kelvin, I'm good. Ah, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I got to see you. Fuck. We still in rounds? Ah. Uh, for the, no, for the not live at viewers the moment. at home, maybe? Not at the moment, really, unless you want to for some reason. Oh, touch. I'm sorry. Good dice tonight. You bastard. You rolled well again. No. I've got those same cards. <clears throat> at home. At home, oh. I do. Yeah. Not anymore. Oh, well, that's pretty tricky of you. Yes, it is. You let him in your house once. That's all you need. That's all, all I need. when I left. Right. I know. That's why I'm so late setting everything up. Wait till bread leaves, then grab the knife, then bring him back before he gets home. Yeah, uh, no, I got so my target. They are nice. Huh? I got my target. They're nice. What are you doing? 
Are you doing something? Or? Yes, I'm gonna cast uh, Shadow Walk so I can get over there really quick. Okay. <laughs> Mike goes over and heals the heals the bad guy. <laughs> I go there and shoot the get farmer. Back up. Get him back. <laughs> Well, you've seen too much. We'll have our combat. Up, five, nine, pow! <laughs> it was just fine. You heard that joke? It was horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. Yeah. Like that horse went in the bar. So Why the, the, the long face? Right between the eyeballs. <laughs> Don't fuck with Kyle when he pulls his boy back. Right. Nine. <laughs> no. No. I guess we should have finished that last part last time if I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right, well, I kind of go there and go. <laughs> but you don't go anywhere. I don't go anywhere. You see me like walk in the shadow and you're like, you still see me? Sorry, Bo, right, you ain't got me That's scared. That's like, uh, what's his name, Drax? It's like, <laughs> it is stealth. If I remain motionless, I'm invisible. You don't see me at all. I teleported right to this spot is where I wanted to be. So okay. I can eat my taco. Uh, 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 Heal. Basically, no, you, uh, heal. see that happen. Everything. The one farmer, he is he's booking it out of there, and you you don't really hear him scream anymore. But he's breathing heavily. You know, you can still you can hear him breathing just because he's <laughs> oh, oh, I he basically kind of goes off walk, into the woods in the distance. Going some where? <laughs> what are you guys doing? Make it. You can have a heart attack. Manuel is probably like. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go over and stab the out of this thing. Okay, you basically start carving him up. Yeah, I'm finished. Should I go after that gentleman? I don't think he's got anything left to go after him for. That must have been his family. Oh. And yeah, the stream of propanity is coming out of Kelvin's mouth right now. Make anybody blush. Do you all right? You steal a dollar? Did he give you change? <laughs> <laughs> what in the hell's going on? I go over there where he's okay. You got to go over there and everything. Um, basically, as you're if you're just like stabbing him and everything, mm -hmm. and as you kind of like you probably like actually rip open the shirt and the, his that little chest piece is basically broken up. You can see on his chest there is already like three huge gash marks. You ever seen uh Trigon? Yeah, Bash the Stampede. You remember all those yeah. ugly ass scars the way they draw it is like that. And there's like no way that anybody could have ever lived through those type of scars. I mean, they're not even healed up, flush with the skin. They're just like an inch and a half into his chest. I'll actually stop doing what I'm doing when that's when I see that. Okay. And just kind of look at him. And wait for the rest of the crew to catch. You guys up. basically kind of get up there and you can kind of see too. Because he doesn't even really, uh, he doesn't even really seem to bleed that much either. I know. I mean, he's just been sitting there pounding on it, and he's taking a, a bullet to the thing. You can see there's blood, but there's not. It's not like fucking yeah, pouring out. Oh. oh, all right, all right. I'm trying to calm you down. No, I actually stopped. I stopped once I saw the scars. Right about the time you showed up, because I was. I kind of look and say, "Fuck, motherfucker!" What the? I think he's already dead. Probably was before you shot him. It's just one of them undead things. Well, it's like that Harold with the, the Harold. I chop that. his fucking head off right then. All, all okay. right. <laughs> well, there's a good reason why. Kelvin, don't date hero too much. Well, yes. I think you already took care of him with the bullet. I imagine he was Yogi, and that's. Boo boo. This is boo boo. This boo boo. Right. Got him right the boo boo. That's right, I tried. It would be the other way around if he got to use his special ability, but he never did. What was his special ability? He could take, he could either create a spark or a flame, whatever, or he could have taken one of your guys' lanterns and he could have just, he had a level five in it. He could have controlled it any way he wanted it. He oh, could have made like it into fire a starter kind of big thing. blast. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Technically a fireball. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, we got lucky. So, any idea why he was here? I'll start searching his pockets. Doing. Okay. Um, you kind of start searching his pocket. Um, As all heroes do. There is really not a whole lot. There's flint and steel. You see some flint and steel in there. Uh, he's got a bowie knife, and he's got two tomahawks, and he does have on his back, although the the bow, he did have a bow on there, and it's probably broken now when he fell, uh, but there's like a quiver of an arrows. Quiver was uh, about 20 arrows or so. Uh, other than that, he really doesn't have much of anything else other than like some trinkets and stuff. <clears throat> but as you kind of look through, like maybe a couple of pouches and stuff, he has those trinkets. 
don't look like they belong to him. Yeah, like his trophies. You'd like trophies and everything. And probably right about then, when you're kind of looking at that, you hear again that that guy kind of like screams, okay. and then you hear it followed by that wail. Mm. Only this oh. time, you can. F I think she did it once before. You can feel it. Yeah. In your bones, and this yeah. one is like terrifying. Oh wow. You know, I don't. Wow. You know, you guys don't have to roll, but it just it just really does make your hair stand up, and it kind of makes you jitter a mm. little bit. What was? Uh, is it like it's going after him? Uh, the screen, it sounds like it's coming from where the man had ran off to. Really? Maybe this gentleman did something. Uh, jump up and start heading that way. Okay. I'm going to take a look at the tomahawk, at the head of the tomahawk. Mm -hmm. Does it look about the right size for... Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. That's, uh... Yeah, Kelvin will say he's walking away. This is the bastard that did it. Well, what the hell's the deal with the bear? His pet? What's with the ghost? Don't care. Trying to find a ghost right now. We'll stick a dime in my hand. Go water. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm going to do much against ghosts. Uh, do you guys follow them then? Or? Uh, yeah, I'll follow. Okay, you, you too? Or? Well, I'm going to take my cane out. I'm like, I'll catch up. And I'm going to go over and cut the head off the bear. Because he looked rotted too, right? Yeah, he did. That, that one will probably take you a while. I, I don't think you're... <laughs> what's your strength? Uh, my strength... 3d6 3d6 okay that which is kind of average yeah. so it'll probably take you a little bit to cut through a bear's head okay so uh you two you basically kind of go and uh eventually up in the distance you can see uh that spirit again and right at her feet basically you can see the farmer and she just kind of like stands and kind of like watches the two of you and as you get closer she actually just kind of dissipates dissipates fuck you bitch and as you kind of get up uh, up to the farmer there and he's on he's basically kind of face down if you kind of spin him around basically his body he just looks like he's saw a ghost basically right and it, but his his skin does seem like it's like shrunken in <laughs> like the life has been kind of drained oh, from him yeah. and everything oh wow kind of desiccated so oh. And Come back here, you whore. <laughs> oh, that's it. Now she goes. Come on. Now, uh, you kind of, if you wait for a few minutes, nothing else happens. She doesn't come back. And you kind of get the feeling, roll your smarts, the two of you, that you're kind of sitting there thinking. I don't know if you've thought about this before, but I just want to see if maybe I need to point it out or whatever. No. Well, I guess uh, difficulty, probably five. I got, oh, six. Six, okay. You do remember, so there was like five, uh, one, two, three, four, five. When you were originally coming up, there was the four whales. And then later on, times, oh, almost by the time you were at the, um, when you were at the cabin, right before you, uh, right after you heard, right before uh, you heard that man scream, you heard a fifth whale. And that was, and other than that, I think that was the only time. Oh, she was right there with you. Yeah. And you, you, she had turned around and she, she yeah. had done that fifth whale. And those were the only times that she ever did it until this last one. Maybe it's just counting coup or something like that. Reminds me of being on their sadness. Reminds me of a little tale of the Banshees back in Iowa. I don't know. You eventually correlate. cut that head off. Yeah, well, I'll kick it off the side. And uh, you go to the picnic basket? <laughs> I'm going to try and shadow walk down to them. And then you never see Bo again. <laughs> All right. Oh. Now I'm in. Reloading New York my City. On the way back. Reloading my pistol on the way back. Okay. Well, I start walking. <laughs> I'll eventually walk to him then. I'm like, oh, to hell with it. I'm going to go to fire. Okay, you guys kind of... And I'll actually up. try yeah, and find that been... lantern and relight it. Okay. I would have been reloading my pistols while we were walking, too. Okay. 
So, uh, basically, you guys just tell me what you're going to do. and I probably, Are you fellas still alive down there? Nope. Well, I'm going to go ahead and take your horses. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they were so true, sons of bitches. I uh, piss on the grave. You find us a shovel. You're alive! <laughs> yeah, the farmer back there died from fright. She scared him? Yep. One of the four. Well, might be feeding on sadness. Or counting coos or something. Kind. I don't know. Six. She had some video. What's with this ghost? Five screams of five dead people. That's Do you know her? Seen her before? No. We've never seen her before. I'll, uh, have a quick conversation in my head to uh, Lily. We encountered what this like her? You have stats for her? Something like her? Uh, witch. Some sort of goose witch thing. Mm. I do not I think Dale's like a devil. Dale, did you have stats for the Lily? Uh, I never came up with stats. I just kind of treat her as whatever you need her to be. For right now? Well, uh, one of you draw a card for me. Okay. How about. Uh, Nine of hearts. Nine of hearts. Yeah. So that's 3d6? Yes. Where's that 3d8? Uh, 3d8. Yes, it is. Oh, it's dangerous, precious. <laughs> okay. She kind of goes, I'm not sure exactly. <laughs> But it could have been, it could have been maybe a banshee. It could have been just, they usually announce the, how would you say, uh, it's the coming of someone's death. Oh. Thank you, honey. But some of them can be kind of different too. That's, that's all I, I can really think of right now. Thanks, man. Thank you, sweetheart. That'll be uh, five ninety nine. <laughs> God damn, they're getting more. I'll just say the cop red. Yeah, I think it might have been a banshee. No form of it. Yes. Well, and you two, yeah, you two know kind of what the Bell Witch was. Right. Was kind of like a banshee, but she was a little bit different. But right. you do remember when you fought her. Even if you had killed her, she would always just come back. You had you had to to go after its anchors. Right, you and, had to and she out. had two anchors. Yeah. So I don't know what to do about this one. Not much we can do. Well, I know what I need to do right now is get these folks buried. Yeah. Oh, uh, hey Olaf, are you any good at doing? I'm not <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's back with the car. They got him all. <laughs> He never came with us. Yeah. Well, Cobb's there. No, Cobb's no, there. No, there. No, there. No, there. No, there. No, there. Anybody not do any preaching around you? Uh, amen. I can say some words, but I don't think anybody wants to hear it. I, I, have, <laughs> I have a faith of one. Can't be hard. I can probably remember right. some stuff that... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, well, I remember some stuff Cobb's drilled in my head. Are you going to bury him first, though? Do I have to? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Are you gonna actually bury him or yeah, yeah. we'll bury him here on, okay. their, on their homestead. Okay. Uh you can find some shovels and stuff in the barn and it'll probably take you a while. Yeah. Um but you basically dig out oh, five uh, graves. Chris mentioned on the Facebook channel the Facebook stream and said, Hey all have fun tonight. Armstrong? No, Christopher Wilson. He's the guy I bought books from. Oh, oh okay. Hi. Ben says 2022 Hi guys, happy birthday, Mike. Yeah, well, yeah. Sweet. And the stage says, pull up your pants, Mike. Oh man, why? <laughs> Action packed. So uh, you go ahead and bury him, and then Mike, go ahead. Okay. The roll or just. Yeah, and it's probably. it's. I forget what time I pull. It's probably about one o'clock in the morning. morning. Yeah. Like at five. Five. Okay, you yeah. you basically kind of give a, a an easy going kind of speech or whatever, and kind of say. <laughs> well, today, uh, well, we uh, God has delivered us into this sacred land. Right. Yeah. Ow! To witness the evils. The evils. The evils that 
were done unto this family, but I suspect, given the way the Indians' lives have been, they have recouped or felt the same. So can we blame them? Sure. Can we blame the everybody else? Sure. But violence gives violence. And this poor family and his children will be the only thing they remember. And I pray they get to the other side and meet God and they know only peace. And I pray that for ourselves one day too, gentlemen. Amen. Amen. And I say some words of Cobb said. Okay. And then uh, give me another drink. <laughs> you get the hell out of my face. <laughs> oh, the drink glasses. And gentlemen, I think we should burn the, the property. Sure, you want to burn this burn, burn this down? Ah, uh, given the motors there, I think probably a might be the best way to cleanse it. We in a wooded area though. Uh, you're in a um, a hollow. Oh, okay. So it's it's far enough away. You could probably burn it. You can at least burn the house. I don't know about the barn. I burned the barn. Yeah. Actually, they'll probably both go anyway. So oh, yeah. it'd be both of them probably. It's because they're close together. What so. we do with the bear in that hollow? Well, I say, if, well, we could drag them in the barn. and They'd burn up with it. Yeah, sounds good to me. Okay. Trial by fire, is it what? You might have to grab your horses, help with the bear. Yeah, that's right. Um, you could drag them off into the uh, into the barn, and basically you go about setting it on fire. I break and I roll my colt just to kind of figure out maybe about them a little bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, go ahead. Got nine. Uh, yeah, he liked long watch walks on the beach. Uh, Good. Was, uh, I got his tender account. He, 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 he was a fan of Shakespeare. Rain. Yeah, uh, in the woods. And he's looking for uh, someone to uh, with magic fingers. Well, what do you know? <laughs> you could have a date. We, we did. We could still have a date. Uh, <laughs> oh. As far as you can tell, uh, he probably was harrowed. Uh, you guys have had some experience. I can't remember. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, My wife came back here. Though, so. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah so and you were all there when she came the, back uh, again. So yeah. did, so did yeah. Kelvin's buddy. Yep. So yeah, it, it, it seems to you that he was probably Harold. Uh, you'd have no idea what tribe he would have belonged to or anything. Right. It's not like you guys were experts or anything, but it's right. nothing that you've seen before. And it's very well that he could have been dead for quite a while maybe from the very beginning who knows right. or he could have been brought up from from the grave i doubt stop old you would he would you would think that because he still had all his he still pretty much had his flash and stuff yeah now they look like the bear marks on his chest are the same size as the bear that uh possibly but maybe not um it's it could be possible as far as the bear goes <laughs> He definitely looks like some sort of something that was possessed by a manitow, maybe. Yeah. And it more, it, he probably looked more. Well, the way that he was fighting, the way he fought at you guys and everything, he seemed a little bit smarter than a normal bear. So maybe it was Brian more was. than just is more than just being an undead bear. And maybe he too was possessed yeah, by a manitow. Maybe manitows. You've never heard or seen anything, but maybe manitows can actually possess spirits, you know, yeah. animals yeah. as well. Or maybe this Indian did something to this bear when it killed it, brought the manatow into it. Could possibly, maybe the bear killed him. Maybe the bear and then he came back and got revenge on it, and and and, and yeah. had a manatow go and into it. it. And As a sort of yeah. Sort I of think this should be its own miniseries. Yeah. <laughs> so. I can't bear to miss an episode. <laughs> so that's kind of what you get out of it. Right. Hmm. Well, light it up. And I guess in if you got a nine. Uh, you can roll again too if you want. Roll one more time. I do. I do like to roll a cult about the witch. Yeah, go ahead. That's what I was going to do. I got a six. Okay, you don't know. What'd you get? Four. Not eight. Yeah. Pretty Dang ghost. You, you know. You know what you knew. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm gonna try. Curious. Curious. Well, it's two in the morning. We're gonna camp out here, or what? We seven. Okay. Yeah. Nothing more than what she told you. I don't know. You want to stay here? <laughs> I mean, we had a nice roaring fire. <laughs> <laughs> Roar! Yeah. Yeah, let's move. 
Of course, that might draw attention from town. Yeah. I, I I think we should just try and ride on, him. Please get on the road or somewhere. All right. Other than here, she may decide to come back and scream about three more times. <laughs> That'd be not good. No. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, you kind of ride on. Thanks, hey, sir. Or maybe four. You do kind of ride on through. Uh, <laughs> Uh, probably like an hour or two, you do kind of reach White Bluff. You can either stop there or you can keep going. How far is White Bluff from where we're headed, Memphis? Oh, uh, you still got like a couple, I think like three three days or something. Oh, okay. we're, so, we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're like, stop here. Yeah. We're yeah. stopping here. So, um, do you tell anybody or do anything while you're there? Not, or well, you just kind of let it go? I'll probably tell the marshal or the sheriff in town once the next morning or okay. after we've rested. Just kind of like tell them what happened there's an indian out there okay you know. oh, do you have telltale or anything like that i have leadership at one and telltale and i have three in persuasion yes yeah, but if you want to yeah, whatever you want to do if you want to try and do something you know uh at the very least roll your persuasion to make them be- believe that that's definitely what happened three. I got a six, but I could I could try and do silver 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 tailed devil. That would help. It doesn't matter really. Oh, okay. He doesn't yeah. care. He's like, what? <laughs> there's an Indian out there. We killed. Good. Yeah. All right. Good. <laughs> Farmer, there's, there's a ghost. No. Uh, he probably does inform you that yeah, they know who those people are, um, and they're probably are pretty shocked. Mm-hmm. Um, and as far as they know, they never had any problems or anything like that with with that family out there or anything. So they're probably he's pretty much believes what you say about an Indian and everything. So um, you kind of take care of that. Basically, eventually you guys will head on and you will go to Nashville. Okay. Uh, and then Olaf and uh, uh, will eventually travel on behind you and they'll they'll catch up to you. So that's sort of the end of that little story. Uh, that is uh, the White Bluff Screamer. Okay. That is a legend from White Bluff, Tennessee. Oh, neat. Uh, that I kind of, there's not a whole lot to that legend. It's just basically a banshee. Right. And people <laughs> making speculations. And then there is a story about a family that did die. Oh, that, wow. that was kind of the story, was that. That's cool. Um, you guys will each get. Uh, four bounty points all together oh. for one for the bear one for him uh you could have gotten the blue chip if somehow he had survived the farmer had survived oh yeah uh but he did not so four bounty points So we end up back in Memphis then? Yes. And then, uh... We can start on the actual story. And before we do... Uh, well, actually, we'll wait for, for him. If you guys want to go ahead and draw... All of you can now draw chips for this new one. Oh, okay. How many? Three. With the lights. Lights. And... Is my still not working? It's just it's working, but it's still I think it's a power issue. It's mine too, it just seems you're a little faint. Okay. How many? Three. Three. And the white. yellow counts as white because we're out of blue. All right, and I'm sorry, Brad. Since we had a technical difficulty, hey, could you repeat that one more time? Because you kind of got cut out. In about it. You repeat what? It was an actual real story. Oh, so uh, that was the uh, the white bluff screamer, and that is based on an old legend urban. Uh, actually, I came from like the 1910s, technically. Mm. Uh, but there was a family that supposedly was um, 
killed hmm. and there had been some wailing beforehand or whatever and they kind of blame it on someone had seen like a banshee type like creature there and basically that's what that legend was based on no we're cool Dale, wow, the France was wrong for you. Forty-three says, "What's up? What's up? Hey, how's it going?" <laughs> okay, so what I was going to do, and I had been doing, is he'd been going to see the, the what's his name, and the uh, acu acupuncture. Oh, okay. Do little. Do little, and uh, trying to see about getting rid of limp. Oh, okay. So, is that a part? Is that? I mean, points I get take to get my shooting to seven. It's if you go above six. So how much is limp? Is that one k three? Yeah. So really six points. Yeah. yeah. I was saving um, up for that, but I forgot. I mean, if not yet, I'm else. just you can just keep going. On. Yeah. Start what? saving again. Yeah. Why don't we go ahead and start on role playing that? Okay. I don't know if you so can go because I've never because I didn't know about this. And oh, I, I think I mentioned it, but maybe go to seven. Yeah, I may have been a player. I probably didn't get shit. I don't know if I go to six. Yeah. Yeah. So he basically went there. Again, because remember we went okay. back and we'll, the kid. Yeah, when you went back with the kids and everything. Yeah, I mentioned it, and then because uh, I got that free thing to come see him. Okay, well that's when he gave you that then, probably. Yeah. Well, and I'd say I can keep doing it over time. Okay. It's not an overnight thing. You don't like, hey, just stick this stick yeah. in here and cheek. Well, we'll role play that part out then. You you go okay. and talk to him a little bit more. Okay. No, don't, that's what role playing's all about. That is. So. So. Uh, what about the rest of you guys? You got any anything for your spending uh, points on that we need to know? Or yeah, what did you get, Rob? You spent yours. I went ahead and upped my gambling, and I upped my occult. Now, are those okay with you, Dale? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I give them feeling. Like we've kind of shared this game world, right? right as yeah. far as DMing, yeah. so and I understand. And I have my demolitions. Demolitions? Yeah, I can see Since that. Since he's playing with them. Uh, she's blowing up Felix's barn a couple I said, times. Yeah. I had right around 50 bounty points, so I just want to kind of converse them through the. Oh, wow. Do you, want to increase, do you want to increase your stats? or Yeah, you can increase it. Yeah, yeah. I, I just stats. added a bunch of extra, extra stuff in so I can have a little more diversity. Okay. okay. Yeah. Instead of doing a stat raise right now. Okay. All right. I, I want to get my shooting to seven, but I have to wait to get. Yeah. I think it gets a lot more difficult. It does. It's way more expensive, and I can't remember how much it is. Yeah. It's a lot more. Yeah. But I was originally saving for that, so I had so many. Mm -hmm. And I forgot I was doing that. It's been <laughs> Which, but I wanted well, to you don't, you don't have to spend them. I mean, well, no, I wanted to. I wanted to. Okay. You know, it made sense with the with the role play. What he was learning. Okay, everything you took makes sense with what you've been doing. Like right. you tried it once, or, or talked about, it or did something yeah. like that. So that's usually what I have. Is if you're going to increase something, you should have been. You should have used it between the last time. Right. And time I agree. You, time you increased it. Increased it. I totally agree to that. So, um. Brad, I increased my speed load from two to three, okay. and then since we have a week between games, I up my driving velocity to two. Okay. So do you have a velocity? He's saving up for one. Okay. And the, one of the mechanics in town had okay. one that I've been practicing on. Okay. And then I was wondering if I could buy a hex for five bounty points. That's pretty much you can buy those anytime. I mean, okay. well, how, well, how do you learn? 
How do you learn those? He just you has actually... to, he hangs around with Trigger, and then uh, Felix has books on that kind of okay. thing, too. So between Trigger and him, he can kind of okay. figure it out. As long as you've got the material, because I know, like, Cobb, he has to go pray yeah. for a day yeah. and do yeah. other stuff. And uh, I'll have, have to, to roll or something. Yeah, too. I think I have to roll, but I need... Do you have your Huckster's book? Yeah, I do. It's kind of the same thing. Do you need another book? Yeah, you got one. Just to see what I need to do to do this. I need to put something right here. There's a big empty spot. Wait, can you toss that to him? Do you have the Law Dogs book by chance? No, I do not. Okay. I did not bring it because I wasn't be planning on using it. It's pretty much the same. Which actually I probably should have, but I don't think you were going to get to a point where I was going to use it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. You got that picture of me. Yeah, for Yeah, show that off. No, it's just there's, a, yeah. there's like an empty spot where nobody's at. So I'm like, we need to put something there. Well, yeah, the picture of the yeah. group. Yeah, let me show it to the camera if you want. Here is our troop. Learning new excellence. Think you have to roll. Are you doing anything a little off? Yeah, I just keep your character. Oh, uh, you know. Or, mm -hmm. What the target numbers are. I think it's a nine, but if somebody's training you, you almost don't have to roll. Right? But they have to have the hex you're going to order. <laughs> See, and I think shooters are different. Then, uh, I'll hold off on buying that hex. I'll look at it when I get it. You sure? Well, you can say you got it, but he ain't need law dogs. Oh, it's in law dogs. It's in, yeah, it's the shootest in law dogs. So I'll look it up when I get home. Okay. You just say he did spend it. Yeah, yeah I didn't bring, it's, it's uh, I didn't bring I can... my iPad either. I may have had it on that, but I didn't bring it. That's either. fine. But I'll probably get fully loaded, which actually instantly put six rounds into your gun. Okay. But it's kind of like, well, I have my speed load, so I'll do that. Maybe that kind of spurs him thinking about, I wonder if there's a way I can do that. Okay. Well, you could say you start. So I'll start thinking looking about that up, it. trying to find how to do it. Yeah. And practicing. Or yeah. So in that case, all I did was the speed load and the philosophy. Okay. You still look up something like? Yeah, if I have enough, I might buy a hex. So I well, I'm going to go ahead and continue. Okay. So. Um, Moon ride along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can stop me if you've got a question or whatever. So we are going to start Our on. Our baby's made. Huh? I'll just role play the other thing. What's in later. Stitching. No, no. This, no, you you can do it. Oh, oh, okay. At All the right. beginning. I'm okay. just, I'm going to re, I'm going to recap what we did. Oh, okay. Because, so we're starting on a, another story here. Uh, this is actually the second part of Soul Down the River. This was a story that we did before we ever started filming, really. Uh, unfortunately, so we don't have that story on YouTube if you're interested, but we are going to recap it because it's been a while Freak since out. we've done that story. So it's not necessary really to know the first one. It's this, the second part is kind of independent. It just ties back in and relates to the other story. Right. So if you remember back uh, during winter, uh, you guys learned of uh, a missing persons case involving a Maria and Jonathan Jackson from a reward poster. And uh, from also from Felix, who was a friend of the father of Maria's. And you guys basically decided to go investigate. Just in case we run into a situation, yeah. it depends on. Uh, you guys met with Jonathan Jackson, who was the father. Um, not the same as the other missing. He was his nephew. There's two Jonathan Jackson. Oh, okay. There was his nephew was Jonathan Jackson, and there was the father. Um, and you learned that Marie and Jonathan were out with friends. They went to the theater and then a walk on the riverfront. When then they disappeared on their way home. Uh, basically, they had parted from their friends right down on the street that they lived on, just a couple blocks away, and then they just never got back home. Uh, there was a journalist at his residence, and he had left the newspaper. Uh, you guys kind of looked at the newspaper, and there was some markings on it. One of them was concerning the article about a, about a, a corpse with no head being found in Tent City. Uh, as far as the missing her his daughter being me missing he didn't really know a whole lot he just wanted to get her back and was willing to pay whatever was required for the reward 
uh, before leaving, Miss Jackson had came outside and spoke with you guys, and he kind of told her uh, her her husband didn't really know because he didn't really wouldn't have really agreed with it. But Maria, but Maria had been volunteering to aid people uh, in Tent City uh, with Doctor Dulo, right? Who runs a free clinic, right? So. Uh, you guys decide uh, to head to the last known location of the two, and you guys kind of found tracks in a nearby alleyway, uh, along with a bunch of like cigar, cigarillo butts, you know, the largest yes. cigarette. Yeah. Yep. Um, and the giant footprint. Yeah, and then you had used hunch on the, the one of the cigarellos, and you determined that they're that the two were kidnapped in the alley. Uh, one of them. Looked kind of like a riverboat man, right. godly dressed. Uh, he was the one that smoking. The other one you couldn't really see, but it was a big guy. He was a mess. Um, the tracking revealed that they had been kidnapped there in the alley, and then they got dragged through the alley to the other street. And then from there, they were loaded up into a wagon. But then the tracks just get mixed in with all, with all the other road traffic. Um, Then you guys kind of went to the theater and you talked to the madame there, uh, but you didn't learn anything. Uh, you then went to the riverfront and ended up at the whiskey shoot, and you talked to Owen Ross, uh, but he kind of gave you the cold shoulder. Yeah. Uh, and so you guys left. You went to the marshal's office. <clears throat> uh, you found out there had been a journalist there. That's right. And, uh, and he had been looking through missing persons posters. Uh, so you guys kind of started looking through some of the missing persons posters, um, and you'd found out there had been, obviously, uh, there had been lots of women who had been kidnapped recently in different parts along the Mississippi. Um, and then you also noticed, uh, cause the deputy told you that, uh, journalists had seemed to be more interested in stuff that had happened a long time ago that they just still had happened to have posters for. And That's they right. were from like almost like uh, 70 years ago, 80 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of the same thing. There was uh, a rash of uh, women who were uh, missing all up and down the Mississippi. Um, back then, also, there were probably some of the reports were actually of runaway slaves um, of women. But they were kind of lumped in there together because they were technically kind of missing, basically. Right. Um and then the the deputy he had kind of explained that you know a lot of this stuff because you, you know tent, the tent city that we mentioned earlier there's always all kinds of settlers come here to memphis before they make their way westward this is kind of like one of the newer like one of the 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 jumping off points before heading west oh yeah so yeah, there's a lot yeah. of people come here and that's what tent city is there's just, just a lot of people especially during winter they're waiting out until until spring and then they'll make off, but sometimes you get younger people, they don't want to be with their families anymore. Right. They find someone, they think they're in love, they elope, they, they do this or that. So it's really hard for the marshal or the deputies to really do anything about these missing persons. Right. They just don't have they the manpower or the resources yeah. to, to look for them. Um, you guys then headed off to visit uh, Dr. Doolittle. Uh, he seemed kind of like a strange doctor to you. He kind of practiced both Western and Eastern medicines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. He was, uh, actually, he was doing acupuncture on a guy on his shoulder when you guys were there. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you find out, yes, Maria had been volunteering her aid with him, and he was kind of impressed with her. He thought she had a lot of talent. Um, and then he did kind of mention, or at first he don't remember, didn't remember too much, but then he kind of mentioned that there was a guy. He thought he was kind of scoping. He thought maybe he was a charlatan scoping out his practice because there's a lot of charlatans go around selling opium and laudum, you know, like miracle deals and stuff like that. Uh, so he's just kind of used to the those people kind of like checking out to see who's real and who's real not, who their, who their competition is going to be. Right. So he thought maybe now maybe he wasn't scoping him out, but maybe he was scoping Maria out. And basically, he kind of described the same person that you saw on your hunch, uh, the uh, sort of riverboat man. Uh, he also seemed, uh, Doolittle seemed also peculiar because then he also kind of gave you a lot of, he had gone up to him and kind of scoped him out himself. 
you know just kind of like walk on right on up to him you know kind of like right next to him looking at a stall or something right and he kind of picked up a lot of clues about like the dirt on his clothes the his use of tobacco oh he had yeah. a lot of little little clues yeah. that he kind of kind of just glanced at and everything yeah, and so he kind of cool. related that stuff he thought maybe this guy uh because of the way the dirt and stuff on his clothes that he had been somewhere where there was a lot of suit like where uh trains come and go yeah so um so you guys kind of took that under advisement. Uh, you also know that uh, Dr. Doolittle did know about that article in the newspaper about the headless corpse. He had actually attended to, to the corpse and kind of had examined it. And he kind of told you uh, it looked like someone had cleaved it. Someone strung had cleaved it once, but it did take it like twice to kind of cut through it, mm -hmm. which was probably a lot stronger than most, most people. Right. They'd have to probably hack it a couple of times. Uh, but that's all he really knew about the body. Uh, you guys then kind of decided to return to the whiskey shoot and talk to Owen again. Uh, this time, you kind of managed to earn his trust. And you find out that you kind of figure it out after you took, talk to him. But apparently, uh, Bo's daughter was there. Yep. The one that worked as a Pinkerton. What's oh, her name? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the one that the Pinkerton? Yeah. Uh, Naomi. Yep. Naomi. Yep. She had actually been there and Looks he like kinda... Amy Potts. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And uh she had actually been there and the two of them kinda you know, he kinda knew that she didn't not really the belong there. Version, not the Avengers for yeah. Doctor Who. Uh, he kind of knew that she didn't really belong there and she was kind of working for, for information. You know, you're um, yeah, really Sorry. Eventually, he kind of found out she was looking basically. Really in, I'm, I smoke crack. She was kind of looking into these what? missing person cases herself. Um, but unfortunately, Owen was unable to help her. Um, you kind of talked to him a little bit more, kind of asked him about uh, the rumors of the slave trafficking and stuff. Uh, the only thing he really had is uh, he knows that sometimes smugglers would use Stanton's Cove uh, just uh, on the Mississippi, on the coast there, not far from Memphis. Uh, you guys then decided to wait until nightfall, and you kind of headed over. You ruled out Black River as being a place as a train station because it's really heavily guarded. Uh, so you guys kind of went over to the Colton Terminal, which is on the other side of town from Black River. And it basically serves all the rural, uh, rural area for railroad needs and stuff. And you guys had checked out, uh, going around and you kind of checked around in the, the warehouses. And that's when you found some guy kind of creeping around, kind of looking into one of the warehouses. Oh, that's right. And that was Philip Monroe. Um, the journalist. Yeah. And basically, uh, without much <laughs> talking, he basically kind of thought you were like, the security for the place yeah and so he just looked like i you know I, I i think there's some a girl that's been kidnapped i think she's in here and I, they're, they're going to be taking her away and everything so you guys kind of go on in and yes there are some basically some smugglers loading up some boxes uh, and that was chet wilson and his yeah. gang yeah uh you did kind of hear him talking something about a man by the name of feeney and he was like, don't look in these boxes, don't do anything, because you don't want to piss this guy off. You've seen what how how he gets. And uh, you guys basically kind of break that up, though. You kind of have a shootout. I think most of them survived. You just kind of wounded them. And then Chet kind of surrendered at the end. But then uh, Trigger went up to the boxes to, to basically get them open. Oh, that's right. And then yeah. all of a sudden, all the boxes break open, and basically there were these headless bodies. Uh, and they just basically rise up and they basically start attacking everybody. Right. And basically you kind of had a fight out, a shootout, but you guys, you're kind of used to when something undead, you shoot yeah, them in the shoot head. Shoot them in the head, there is no head. There is no head. Yeah. And so basically you had to hack them to pieces and, and basically burn them and everything. Yeah, because they just kept coming. I mean, they were Yeah, yeah if, if, if they got maimed, the, most of the body and the main part would just... Yeah. Even the arm would kind of like crawl even, yeah. you know? Yeah. Rabid weasel. Uh, yeah. Chet didn't know anything about the corpses, and he didn't really know anything about the missing girls. They were really just... They were smugglers, and yeah. they were routinely hired by this guy to to pick up boxes at the warehouse and then take them 
out to Stanton's Cove where they would drop him off at his boat. And he tells you the man that he was that they were working for is a guy by the name of James Feeney. And it wasn't just the fact that these things freaked him out, but he was even more freaked out about James Feeney. Yeah. He did not really want to talk to you guys at all. He didn't want to tell you anything. You kind of had to uh, it was like interrogate him. You, you had to intimidate him. Yep. Uh, and basically, he kinda, yeah, Pretty hard. I think you did. Yeah. Uh, you didn't beat him or anything, but you just you bullied him into it. I think you did. I think you basically put the gun in his mouth or something. Yeah, but I mean, you know, that's just small things. <laughs> uh, All the little things that make it yeah, happen. You know. Well, yeah. You didn't pull the trigger or anything. Um, but I'm well. And then basically you found uh, that was like interrogating. in the boxes, the one guy. there were like uh, usually like stamps, lettering and stuff like that. And you saw lettering for a boat called the Jezebel. Um, and then basically after that, uh, uh, Philip told you his story. So Philip is actually from San Angelo, Texas. Right, mm. right, right. Okay, and uh, he originally was from New Orleans, though. And uh, there was a man by the name of Carlos White that his father had known, and he was uh, kind of a hero in a way. Basically, a long time ago, back in the early 1800s, when he had originally came from New York and he had kind of moved down <laughs> along the Mississippi. He had heard about two girls being kidnapped out of St. Louis. And then so he kind of went on uh, a rampage going down south, uh, going through all the different cat houses, hog farms, wherever they had girls that were used for prostitution, and basically kind of looking for these two girls. And eventually he came away and he found them before they were actually abused, supposedly. And he saved their lives. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, afterwards, they kind of found out uh, it was a gang by the the, the Sam Purdy gang. Mm. There was like five or six of them. That. Yeah. And basically, they were running up and down the Mississippi right. River, and right. they would just basically pull into a place <laughs> and kidnap someone. Uh, they would go to plantations, and if they saw a black girl that they liked, they would kidnap her. They would they take, didn't care. They didn't care. They would, you know they pretty. would kidnap the slaves, and they would take them up north. And sell them up there, and then the other ones way they you know the uh, girls from up north they would take down south. Basically, they would move them all it was up and human down the trafficking. River. Basically, yeah, it was. Yeah, and they kind of made kind of a, a fortune for themselves. Uh, they had kind of centered out of Nanchez, Mississippi, um, but they didn't really. They just kind of centered there, and then all their deal, you know, who they sold them to was elsewhere. They would just have like an auction, like a secret auction up on the river, you know. <laughs> Uh, Carlos White decided to go on really a, wonderful pieces of crap is what they were yeah uh, Carlos White decided to go to war against them basically mm -hmm. uh, but he really couldn't do it guns blazing or anything you know um, mm -hmm. so he basically hooked up with a journalist and basically him and the journalist would start writing newspaper articles and letters uh, the, the letters they would send out to governors, uh, um, senators, rep, you know, whatever. Anybody with any type of influence, they would send out letters. The journalists <laughs> would write out uh, reports and, and basically talk Come about dome. the supposed gang and who they were and stuff. And uh, <laughs> although they never actually technically arrested any of them at that time, uh, the gang was pretty much kind of like run to ground and they had to, to go into hiding. And then not too long after that, the gang members started ending up dead. Uh, Sam Purdy himself had been stabbed to death in his bed. Um, yeah, they were. Another two of the guys had been ambushed on the road. Um, another one supposedly had been was supposedly caught cheating on a riverboat and then thrown overboard, with maybe worse having happened to him, such as. Yeah. Um, only one of them, yes. only one of them got arrested, and he got arrested for having kidnapped a girl earlier during that time period from also from St. Louis. It was this uh, Sally Fields, I think, it actually was her name, Sally Fields. Oh. I think smoking uh, the name. It was Fields, something yeah. Fields. Yeah. Um, and Clover Fields. <laughs> so basically, they actually linked that crime to him, and so they actually arrested him. 
he was, was the only member to get away without getting killed and that was and they assume those guys were killed by a vigilante committee or possibly by carlos white right you know but no one no one knows and no one would ever say anything no one would care the man that got arrested obviously was the oldest guy in the group and that was james feeney right and so he went to prison and that was the last they ever heard of him well then philip monroe had uh he always collects newspapers from new orleans apparently he told you yeah and he had seen that there was an obituary for carlos white and he found it kind of funny uh, carlos white was a really old man but supposedly he was still a pretty healthy man because he supposedly had a lot of kids afterwards oh right uh and uh so he found it kind of funny he also kind of found it funny because i think he mentioned that his own mother and father had kind of died under similar circumstances where they died in bed they didn't have any unusual sicknesses or illness and they just kind of passed away so he became intrigued and started to go investigate uh and he wanted to go find what happened to, to this this Feeney guy because that was the only member that was still alive he wanted to track he, he assumed he was dead uh because this all took place like in in uh, 1804 right yeah and so it'd been like 70 years uh, some 90 year old guy running around kidnapping people. yeah um so he did find out that uh Feeney had eventually escaped from prison after having killed uh his cellmate and so he kind of knew that he did get out at least um but uh he was still i mean that was like years ago you know and chances are he should have been dead by old age by now right but but then he started coming across all these little towns where basically he was starting to notice a trend again people were being kidnapped right and then he also kind of noticed the thing with uh he had kind of picked up a story with the headless corpses and then so that's when it led him to kind of memphis he was going to at the very least he was going to investigate that and see right. if he can come up with an article for his newspaper because he's been away for quite a while wandering around yeah. up the mississippi and they're kind of like you need to, you need to send us articles you know you were, yeah. we're paying you to give you a story and he keeps telling them i got this story about this gang you know but I, i'm right. working on it but i get, he had to keep filling in some small stories right. to, to keep them going and uh that's basically when he basically was one step ahead of you in your investigations he, you know you basically yeah. were following him around so you got to the warehouse so uh with that being done uh you guys barely convinced chat to take you guys out there right you were it was wasn't a, good enough he was only he gonna take it so where. far too yeah, yeah. It, you know it wasn't good enough that you know he you told him you wanted him to take you there but he still wouldn't go all the way right uh and so you basically but I thought him didn't. <laughs> I know. uh you had gotten to the trail where basically he kind of like okay you just go down this trail this is gonna go to the cove and just as that was happening you guys got attacked by a bunch of more headless corpses only one of them did have a head and this according to philip later was uh evans i think joe evans i'll have to look up the name later but he was one of the former gang members mm -hmm. and kind of met his his face kind of met that description but it was kind of a, a bloated version of it right and basically uh he was a headless there were headless corpses and a head and an orphan head orphan and heads. basically whenever you would like kill or maim or destroy one body he would like rip the head off and he would toss it to another body and he right. would kind of continue i remember yeah. that was really messed up that was cool yeah that was, a good, that was, that was disturbing good, so. uh chet had basically freaked out and he hid underneath wagon uh philip had taken the uh a six shooter from the guys from one of the other bandits and he actually kind of was shooting pretty good he got some lucky shots and you guys basically kind of fought mm -hmm. fought and you destroyed him destroyed yeah. that one gang member right you guys basically then went to the to the um steam or steamboat uh just the small the small steamboat the like a, the river raft boat type yeah. ones and uh, basically, that's where you ran into James Feeney. And as you got there, basically, you guys were attacked by a Levathon. Yeah. It was basically a giant, large, squid-like creature uh, that was basically kind of attacking you uh, from from behind his boat. And then you guys figured out it wasn't real. It was an illusion. Right. And then so basically, you kind of continued fighting on. Um, 
I don't remember all the details. I remember at some point someone blew a hole in the side of the ship right. where the boiler room was. Uh, I think Mike eventually soul blast him. Yeah. And then and maybe, and then maybe I thought Trigger maybe shot him through the hole in I the cabin. He did. Yeah, he did. So I think you kind of did a double tap on him. Um, but he was still kind of alive uh, when you kind of closed in on him and everything. And basically as he lied there dying, a ball of light. And he said something before. He said something. I know some sappy. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, he knows who you are. He's yeah. coming for you. Yeah. Something like that. And basically, that, that ball of light came out, and it just basically went up and it went down the Mississippi. And uh, Philip kind of freaked out, and he ran up and kind of watched it go because he knew that I had to do something with with uh, the rest of the game because he kind of surmised. James Feeney, yeah, he was alive. He was kept alive through whatever black magic he knew. Yeah. But the other guy, he was dead originally. Yeah. And and so if he's alive, then maybe the rest of the gang is alive. In some way or yeah. fashion. And so basically he was planning on going to go down in Anchez, Mississippi, and basically investigate to see if he can find out where they were and what they were up to. And then he kind of asked if he needed help if he could you know if you guys would come and help him if if yeah. it came to it because after seeing these two guys um hey how you doing <clears throat> after seeing these two guys he didn't know if he would be able to take them on or anything like right. that or if he'd be able to get the the local marshals or anything to help him take him down right so and that was quite a while ways ago that was during winter and so now you guys i think you guys That's went perfect. and did the adventure in mexico um, and then you kind of came back, you did the Christmas special, <laughs> the uh, and then you, we did, I think then we took COVID story. time off, huh? Then we took COVID time off. Yeah. 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 It took COVID time off. And then we kind of did the, I, we did the Connor thing at last. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. There may have been one other story in between that we did. Maybe. It's so probably. it's been a while since we did that story. So now you guys are back in Memphis. Um, you guys kind of arrived, um, Kind of went back to the Felix, and then Cobb and Olaf basically kind of, kind of show up. So you guys, uh, it's probably been about a week. Uh, we'll say if there was anything, you kind of catch up with uh, Cobb and then about what happened on the road if you want to. If that's yeah. something you were hey, talking Cobb. about. Hey, Cobb. Blah, 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 Banshees. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and now uh, it is basically kind of springtime. It's early spring. Uh, there is uh, quite a bit of rain, and it's actually been raining tonight. Uh, it's probably you know, like about six o'clock, six or seven man. o'clock. <laughs> uh, it's been pretty quiet for the most part the last couple of weeks, and uh, you guys are just kind of sitting around at Felix's. Uh, you're probably all. Uh, Cobb is actually out at the Blessed Banjo. Uh, Manuel is off doing something else. Is my steam wagon down here yet? We, we, well, did you order a steam wagon? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. A long time ago. We'll say it's not here yet. I don't know anything about it. So, uh, there's a, there's a canal that's all backed up. There's a shipping, <laughs> shipping hold up right now. Uh, real, real world reflections. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, steam wagon. Well, where do you have to, where do you have to order it from? Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City. Oh, yeah. It's the Missouri River is all backed up. Yeah. It's, it's flooded. Flooded. Well, and you know, they, ask, they would have... They didn't ask for pontoons on this thing. So right. They right. would have to probably take it south. Yeah. And then come back up the river, probably. Yeah. So I mean, you probably could, you could probably get a duck foot. We got one. Yeah, but you can get that one. Blah, 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 blah. You know, finally me with a duck. We have one of those. Don't we have a duck foot? We can borrow one. We can borrow. It's not ours. Oh, we borrow it. We have a boat. I think it was a duck boat. Yeah, we got that. Yeah, and we have the, you guys overtook the Jezebel. Do you rename the Jezebel? I think we liked it. Oh, I don't know. Kind of had a bad history, so I think we should rename it. That's about the Beelzebub. That's just as good, yeah. They're both internally damned and constipated. My horse is the my horse is the Peter Paul Mary, so we have to name the boat the Matthew Mark Luke. No, no, you your Pete on that one, no flaw. How's about about boat? The boat. The boat. <laughs> the boat. <laughs> Might as well just stay with Jezebel. Jesus. Yeah. Now, now, hold on. Now, we got to have a proper name now, gentlemen. Proper name. Proper name. Like, uh... Like the Rebel Leo? 
Just the bell is out of the Bible, you know. No dicks? Yeah, I, I bought off Randy. This mean I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> we can name it Bo's Float in Paradise. Oh, uh, let's see. Poseidon's Adventure. No, um... Titanic sounds good to me. <laughs> that sounds like a thing. Amazon Queen. The Justice. Now you're getting too righteous, man. Oh, uh, not so justice. Per per <laughs> Night Rider. First name, Buford T. Buford T. Yeah, I was in here with the Buford T. Justice. Buford T. Justice. Actually, Copperhead kind of speaks up, and he's probably all quiet after this whole conversation. He says, What about Carla? That's my wife's name. What about Carla Lily? The Carla Lily. How about that? I, I think that's pretty good. Carla Lily. The thing that I, I raise a glass to that. I'll do, I, it would be very awkward to say no. <laughs> that's why we said that. they're loading his gun. <laughs> why do you say that? <laughs> Just a hunch, and I don't have to cast up a spell. <laughs> no, no, that is very, very Carla very Lily. Lily. Carla Lily. Yeah. Carla, uh, Carla. Felix there, he's kind of playing chess with Simon. He's uh, playing with Simon's chess? On the table. Yeah. And uh, he's like, uh, uh, that reminds me, I uh, hired a new captain for the boat. I'll uh, let him know that you guys want the name changed. Oh, what's this captain's name? Uh, Ahab. Seamus. Seamus will call him O'Donnell. Oh, a good Irish captain. That's good. Ahab. He's got this big station on what? That sounds white pretty fish. familiar. <laughs> There's white fish in this river. I've never known him before. I mean, the giant white cat. I interviewed him, obviously, but. And he did come with what some recommendations. Was he on tender? I don't know what it that needs. is. It, it's a new telegraph uh, dating site. It's left, right, or left. <laughs> Tinder. Tinder. Do you, it's actually Do Tinder. you like he found us in this, on the street? That was a different Stop. guy. Yeah. 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 He found him on Holy Captains. You get, a, you, get a, you get a picture of the Indian. I like long walks on the... That doesn't look like Not an old Donald. Not that guy. <laughs> I think he's fishing you. I don't think that's right. That's why he's a riverboat captain. He's fishing. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. And he goes, well, actually, he's uh, he's from, was originally out of Boston. He used to sail uh, on uh, some whaling ships. Kind of a downgrade, but maybe he's wanting to retire. Well, he is a little bit older. Uh, she's 110. Uh, see. <laughs> yeah, a riverboat man. He's actually in a coffin. We just laid on the boat and hope for the best. <laughs> they just strapped They're with us. You'll probably race from the dead and uh, you know, leave the wheel. <laughs> well, anyhow, they've been kind of fixing up the boat a little bit. He used to run this ship called the Demeter. It came in from <laughs> Transylvania or Romania or something. <laughs> Uh, but he goes, well, they've been fixing up the boat either way, so and I'll have them. Uh, I'll send one to have them have that name changed. Well, we'd like to meet him sometime too. Oh yeah, that boat's got a gallon going on too, right? I remember correctly. Right well, it it's, needs to be put thing. back on. It's the same one we but, keep pulling around. Yeah, so. yeah. I thought we, we just, had two. I thought one was on no, the boat. And one no, was, no, we said no. Oh. We we because it was on the garage. I think at one point. Yeah, we put on the roof. It was on the boat, and well, then it was we put on the wagon. house. Yeah, and then we put it in the wagon. We put it on back of Bo. Yeah, it's like I don't think you got that. To Leslie's work shed because a stone was hanging around right. or something. They're like, yeah, oh, we'll keep them off. The property. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we yeah, did bring it up. Well, you got to worry about that. I got a steam. So, steam um, I'm coming to the house. So. You can hear from the front door. I got it. Okay. You kind of jump on up and you kind of walk on up, mm. over. Um, it looks like the rain has kind of stopped. It's maybe a little bit of mist so you can kind of see through one of the side windows of the door. I'll peek around. Um, you kind of peek around. Um, probably roll your cog. Difficulty seven. Or search, actually. Search difficulty seven. Search? Or search at there. Difficulty seven? Yeah. Uh, seven. Uh, you don't see anyone at first, but then you kind of look down and you see a young boy. There's a dwarf out here. No. <laughs> oh, you know what, Shane? I'll, uh, I'll open the door up. Oh, yeah. You're learning the castle. What's that? I'll open the door a little bit. So what can I do for you, son? Okay. Uh, you can open up the boy. Uh, open up the boy. Oh, shit. Come back here. 
Fatality! Well, that other kid was a pinata, I thought. You know. 13 or 14. Uh, kind of that street <laughs> urchin type look. He's got the cap, um, light clothes on, shoes, you know. Right. Uh, um, and then he's got maybe like a little light overcoat to keep the rain out and everything. Uh, he goes, Telegraph, sir. You kind of hand that over to him, please. Ooh, it's a prop. Ooh, and you kind of take it, and he kind of goes. Olaf comes in the door, grabs it. He goes, <laughs> he walks back in the house. And you kind of take it, and he goes, <laughs> sorry. And then he kind of turns. Oh, hold starts, on a second, son. He starts running down, kind of hitting all the pedals. Uh, you kind of hey, yell that out. you little shit. <laughs> he kind of twirls down a little bit and kind of looks. Come back here. And he goes, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, I take my wallet out and give him a tip. Oh. Well, he kind of comes back. To <laughs> he comes back. <laughs> okay. Well. Kind of takes the tip. Actually, he does seem a little kind of nervous. Kind of takes the tip and goes, are you sure? Well, of course. You delivered a message, didn't you? Uh, yes, sir. But you haven't read it. Up and it starts On your way now. But you haven't read it yet. <laughs> I'll shut the door and read it. Okay. <laughs> I have just robbed you. <laughs> Son of a... <laughs> We've been trying to reach you in The warranty on your wagon. <laughs> your sea wagon has expired. <laughs> I read the first two words and I just fold it up and I immediately take the subpoenas. To be like something. To be. I gotta go to Arizona. Ah, <laughs> uh, you kind of come over and. I wonder he didn't want to tip. He's like, I don't know. Kind of move. He kind of moves a piece and everything. So Felix says, uh, uh, we just received a telegram, but I don't know what these words are, and I'm afraid to, to read them any further. Uh, do you want me to look at it? Uh, not necessarily, but can you read a few of the words before you continue? With the rest of them? Uh, I suppose so. I don't know what this is. You don't have to head back. Uh, he kind of looks he at did right. thing and he goes, uh, If he looks like he's keeping, re I'll snatch it from him. Okay, well, I mean, he kind of looks at it. He does, it looks like he's more like just kind of glancing through it real quick. Uh, and he kind of goes, Ah, uh, kind of hands it back to you. He goes, uh, If you're afraid that it might be something of a uh, magical nature, I'm. I'm afraid you're you're safe in this case. Oh, I'd, it'd be so. I wasn't mm -hmm. sure. It seems like uh, perhaps the hell's on that. Either one of two things happened. Um, Gremlins got a hold of a telegram that was sent to you, or Yankee Raiders intercepted it and changed the message, which I kind of doubt they would send whatever that is. What on earth is on that telegram? I hand it over to Bo. It was, uh, usually when I deal with such things, I usually eat for important messages. I use a carrier. Yeah, yeah it's Mississippi Western. <laughs> Western Union Telegram. Oh, I, I read too much. <laughs> you may have already won $1,000. Received Memphis, Tennessee, 587CO. Delivery, Felix Mansion. Well, it seems so bad. I don't see nothing about that. Don't say the words out loud. Your daughter is pregnant. I do have black. Uh, doesn't do you good. Spanish? Nope. I think so. What about Swahili? Nope. <laughs> I know what swank means, but I don't do that anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. Telegraph that. I take it up to a mirror. Put it in a mirror. Go find a mirror and I don't I don't know if that'll work. What are you thinking? That maybe it's written backwards. It could be. Read it backwards. Gentlemen, I'm, I have a theory. That looks Don't good. take that to the outhouse again. Just read it backwards. Can't you read it backwards? No. I'm just going to read it on the crapper? Come on. Let me see it. I can do it. Yeah, I can do it. I've done all sorts of things in the army. Maybe I can be a Yeah, that's yeah. for Mo. <laughs> Sir Nitz, Red Indian, but now don't look deep. <laughs> now you're reading it as if you're know. backwards. Freddy's the devil. Bob Brooke, Freddy's the devil. <laughs> I think it is not in English. If you read that the right way, you should just change it. Unfortunately, my player, kept the player who plays me, is dumb. <laughs> Cannot read backwards. Dear friends. Now, looky there. Now, that fella's smart. He's playing this fella. I have located some people 
of interest we share we share stop uh, people of inch yeah interest we share stop all of you are in danger stop he oh he knows you all be main yo he knows you all by name stop do not come to Natchez stop oh repeat do not come stop sounds like it's from our friend Philip probably in danger and well, yeah, that means we just gotta go take a little trip down here and see what's going on right if he doesn't want us to come well, what does that say he, he knows who we are I'm assuming he's caught up with Feeney and these other fellows and Feeney did say well, I know who you are eventually Feeney did say he knew we who we are so if we go to help with Philip Monroe we're putting our lives in danger that's what if it was actually written by Philip that's what he's saying Hmm. Unless it's somebody just trying to throw us off. Either way, it's kind of odd that we got a letter from the Felix. Got a Felix. telegraph. Oh, shit, that's the wrong letter. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun. We were trying to reach your letter. I did steam wagon I should have done that. That would have been, been great. <laughs> that would have been hilarious. <laughs> Well, is he in danger then? I imagine they know him. Sounds like he is, but like I said, if it was written by Philip. Felix kind of goes, well, unless he actually wrote it that way specifically, like I said, if Gremlins got a hold of it, they could change it all the, any which way they want. Gremlins. Or he wrote it that way to make sure that nobody else could see what the hell yes, he Yes, Gremlins. Said. They're, they're tiny little creatures that mess around with uh, things your mother. of uh, scientific nature. Kinda, your mother. Kind of mystery your makers. Yeah. They love to get into the telegraph wires. Ah, shirtlings! Uh, yes, I suppose that... Is that what you call them in Sweden? Yeah, I... Uh, yay. Puddings? What? Shirt, you... Shirtlings. 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 They put the shirt up and the whoa of the bead. And the herd of mugger eat the bottom and the fur of the bark bark. Yeah. I think uh, we actually do need to go down and anxious. Well, of course. Anytime he's telling you not to do something, he should immediately do it. <laughs> there's, a, there's a situation like this called OCD. <laughs> or well, it sounds like you boys are going to be off for another trip then. I imagine, I guess so. Uh, All right with you. You need us for anything, Felix? Uh, no, not necessarily. Do you wish me to uh, tell Captain O'Donnell, or are you planning on going a different route? It would probably be quicker to take the boat. Yes. Yeah. Just follow that damn Just boat. Our horses is on board. Just nail them oh, to the side. Unless we want to buy some down there. Oh, the horses? Yeah. You can load the horses up. That's what I'm saying. It's a pretty decent sized boat, if I remember correctly. Right? Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's meant to haul freight. I mean, yeah. it's not like a huge fucking tugboat or something. No, right. But you can get horses down underneath, mm -hmm. or actually, the horses will probably have to stay on top, right? So right. Because it's not that deep on the in the, in the hull. Yeah. Um, but as long as you tether them, I mean, it could be dangerous if you go under. You you know, the horses would drown. Well, so we buy some down. Down well, we have the fun. Maybe they'll have a velociraptor down there. We can try. <laughs> yes, I will call him Blue. Yeah. <laughs> That's the weirdest car I've ever seen. <laughs> That's a car. We'll just leave the horses for now. I'm I, trying I, to I, way around. I'd be taking me to Mulberry with me. Last time I was in New Orleans, sometimes walking's even better. <laughs> That's true. So I'd have some connections down there. Hmm. Well, I do pack up my saddle and, and 
So no, it's been a week or not yet? Yeah, it's been a couple of weeks since. Uh, probably about, I mean, no more than two weeks, but we'll say we'll say a week and a half since you guys came back. Uh, well, I need to finish up a few things before we go. We'll probably take a bit to get provisions and everything else loaded up and ready for bear. We want to leave today or tomorrow or how long? Well, you it's think? nighttime right now anyway. Oh, okay. So a day to prepare and then uh, the morning after. And I think there has probably, to be a morning after. <laughs> probably the captain has to get ready for supplies and anything anyway. We should uh, probably Simon, find out. Simon goes. Well, I can run down there and let him know now, at least so that way in the morning he can he can start on it right away. I think that's admirable. Cool. And Simon kind of gets up and go grabs his coat, and I'll be back. And he kind of takes off. I'll be front. What time of night is it? Uh, it's about seven o'clock. Dark. Probably an appointment tomorrow, or should I just go with him? Or you, you can just go on in tomorrow. Okay. I'd say go Probably not a good idea. To show up in the middle of the night. Yeah. Well, I have done it before. <laughs> Where is this at? That's well, that's a whorehouse, Mike. You're expected to show up at night. Oh, oh, well, let's make it sure. Whorehouse? Dr. Doolittle's. No. That's where that boat parts. Yep. Any blowhole at all. I still get so much, not as much as I used to. <laughs> Any port in your mom? <laughs> Just when I've got that little blue pill. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm spill you, I'm spill you, I'm gonna Trigger will probably it. say he's gonna he'll go down with you guys. Because he was the one in the first one. But yeah. he's feeling a little sick since rooming with Manuel. He might have a little bit of the pink eye right now. <laughs> yeah. He's hoping it'll clear up. That elvish later. pink eye. Dude. We don't even have elves here. Yeah. He gets really sick just throwing him up into the boat. Yeah. <laughs> we'll put him in a duffel bag. <laughs> Just put it over a second for every uh, do we want the sure or the <laughs> well might work or which? What do you think? <laughs> I'll take the uh, Manuel, please. Yeah. Oh, all right, we'll have our little caddy <laughs> that brings out the zip. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh so we guys do. Load up and go. Yeah, pretty much whatever preparation everybody needs. Okay. Preparation H. Uh, kind of just kind of prep up your personal stuff and then yeah. spend the night yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Get a good night's sleep. Simon will go. He basically, Simon will probably return around nine o'clock or so. And, um, he'd let the captain know uh, what was going on. Okay. And, uh, so, yeah, it probably will take probably a day. So if you've got some other stuff to do. Okay. Uh, he'll get some extra coal loaded on, and uh, he'll see to the food provisions. I will assist. With uh, and if you want to bring down the horses beforehand or something, no, we're leaving the horses here. Yeah, well, we want to bring bring him. Him. Oh, he wants to bring his. Take the so. Okay. So you can cut, my saddle. You so. can cut that one in half, and then you can store it underneath. <laughs> <laughs> Turn into glue bottles. And yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. take my provisions down here. and just help them the rest of the day to get the boat ready. So, excuse me. You're going to go down there and, and, and help the, at the yeah, boat? I'll take my stuff down in the morning and then just help them okay. the rest of the day. Uh, what are you planning on doing the next day? Uh, probably mostly the same thing, get everything ready, but I will go out and visit with Carla at the grave, and then, okay. then I'll head down and help out. Um, okay. In case I don't come back, uh, hopefully I will. You're gonna go over to the doctor's office. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, well, you probably kind of go over there uh, pretty early. Uh, you're pretty sure he's at his office this day. Okay. On these particular days, and you know he, like on Wednesdays or something, he goes down to Tent City. He spends like two days out of the week or something there. But okay. you're pretty sure he's at the office right now. Um, so you kind of head on down there. Um, you kind of. There's already a sign that says, come on in. Okay. Um, you kind of come on in and it's yeah. basically <laughs> that kind of front room, kind of like a reception room, but there's really not much of a desk. There's just some chairs and like a table with a few like newspapers and stuff kind of come on there. There's a back room, but it's got like a, a door to it and everything. All right. I'd basically come in and wait for him. Okay. Um, you don't know. There's no bed or anything when you yeah. enter, so... Doctor, are you here? After a few moments, the door kind of opens up, and he kind of steps, kind of looks through, kind of just pokes his head through, and goes, 
Oh, uh, it's Johnson, isn't it? Beauregard. Don Donaldson. Oh, Donaldson. Yeah. Okay. Because, uh, Mr. Donaldson. Yeah. No, oh. no. Are we just starting this, or we... Are oh, we Brad. starting what? No, I'm talking to Brad. Is this been going on, or are we just starting it? No, now? we're just starting it. Oh, okay. All right. So... Doctor, your affair or what? Yes, yeah. well, we're about to do a little. I love you. That's <laughs> a little pokey pokey. I was wondering if I could uh, cash in the certificate. Oh, did I give you a certificate? Someone did. I don't quite recall how or who, but he kind of reaches through the half open door and kind of pulls out his hand. Is this a bad time? <laughs> I pass it to him. Oh no, no, not at all. Kind of looks at it. Opens his eyes up a little bit. <laughs> Looks like you've got a free session. Come on in. Kind of opens up the door. Oh, well, thank you very much. Kind of as he opens up, he kind of spins and walks on in. His his coat kind of blowing off to the side a little bit. Thank you, Doctor. He opens the door, he's bucked in. No. I'm ready to start, Mo. <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> so what is it that um, you need to help what? with? Well, Doctor, um... Actually, some various events that kept me from coming down and visiting you, and it's for more than just one thing. It's my leg. It's been hurting me for some time ever since the injury. So like every step I take, it's just like a stab and a knife in it. Is this the only injury? Well, there's many upon my soul, but that'll take more healing from God above or Buddha, whoever else it's going to be. That lovely little hooker over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I got to. Was, uh, so what happened to your leg? If you want to take a seat on the table? Yeah, I go up, sit down, kind of limp up. I got okay. the brace on. I'll take it off because he probably... Okay. Yeah, and actually, he goes, oh, he actually probably kind of looks like this. Oh, uh, I see uh, you got this from, uh, and I can't remember who gave it to you. I uh, bought it at that, that, sh that shop. shop. In, uh, yeah, you both bought one. Yep. Yeah. Uh, whatever that, he kind of mentions, he kind of mentions that, that guy's name who runs that. Yeah. Yes. He kind of says that and it kind of rings, but yeah, that's, that's who I bought it. I believe it was his. Well, yes, he, he actually manufactured it. I designed it for him. Okay. I can't shake my head. You all, man, kind of kind of looks at it and goes. Now I had it all engraved and nice. Yeah, I, I think you made a few modifications to it. Well, I had to make the clothes match, such like that. He kind of sets it off to the side. And... Is, is this a, a naked lady that you etched in? Or are you <laughs> strapping it? What? Is this well, a, is no, this a, it's more. Is, that, I'm is that a naked lady on a mud flap on the back of it? <laughs> no, this side oh, is me, and as I walk, she laying down. So uh, you can see it's doing a little action. <laughs> her, her, her mud flap is up. Yeah, my mud flap is up as well. So, uh, how did you injure your leg? He was in war of the battle. <laughs> in war of the battle. Well, my last main battle, I took a shrapnel or a bullet in the knee, not sure what. Were they able to remove all the shrapnel? You mean you were married? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I believe so, but, you know, the doctors of the time uh, do what okay. they can. He kind of has you, uh, actually goes up. Uh, he kind of turns and kind of looks like he's kind of getting crispy. You know, they have like white gloves probably i don't think they had like they didn't have latex i don't know what kind or like uh he might have white gloves back then it was for like it, it, actually he might have he probably um, would have gloves but yeah, normally he would actually uh yeah. he might have some um bit of bed pan made from uh sheep stomach sheep sheep yeah. intestines yeah basically kind of like kind of made from that and, i guess i guess but it's actually they kinda, it's actually still got me that is they never kind of twisting yeah <laughs> actually just a sheep stomach you just <laughs> basically he kind of turns and goes over a table and kind of grabs a couple of those and kind of kind of rolls them up with hand and kind of gives it a slap like that and he goes now i'm going to need you to remove your pants <laughs> Well, Doctor, I might have been more than tightening, but I have changed my ways a bit. <laughs> well, it's not something that you get a choice in. Well, that's what usually happens. <laughs> <laughs> this is going just like normal. <laughs> I, I pay you after or before? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got the golden chicken. Yeah, yeah, I got the uh, golden chicken. I'm about to get the golden yeah. bar. <laughs> Uh, I drop my pants. Okay, you kind of drop your pants, and he basically and then goes. Goes, 
<laughs> he basically uh, looks over your leg and basically kind of does some <laughs> some movements and bending and kind of questions you some more um, this hurt? about what hurts and what doesn't hurt. He probably kind of does look look at the the wounds and the the stitch, you know, the sewing and everything. Like it's, that. A, it's a level three hindrance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> On a scale of uh, one to ten. Well, we can try this to see if this helps out any, but oh, it that, goes I can of like excitedly say it. I'm like, no, no, is this that uh, acupuncture I saw you putting on that gentleman? Uh, that's exactly what I was thinking of doing. Better well, fascinating. If that doesn't work, we might have to either cut it off or just cut into it and maybe check around the bones. But let's try acupuncture for this. Yeah, I prefer the first <laughs> thing. I don't like Let me this. hack your leg off and check it out. Uh, last time I did exploring was on the Memphis Bell. That's a very lovely establishment, but. Uh, uh, I don't need to I think do any more. I, I think that was a there. bomber in World War II, Mike. <laughs> oh, well, I don't quite recall. In the dark of night, in the metal battle, you quite remember what happens. Uh, so he goes and gets a pan and kind of fills it with like a rubbing alcohol and everything, and he basically gets out. You've seen him before when you were yeah. at his tent that one time, the big needles and everything. And uh, basically, he'll start kind of going through and kind of, kind of yeah. kicking certain points, yeah. and basically, he, he kind of does a little bit of the acupuncture and everything. Okay. Um, so actually, I guess the good question is, it's how well that he does. I didn't actually bring his character sheet with him. No, oh, he went. He botched. <laughs> I'm a little off today, but we're gonna find you fine. It's time for multiple personalities. <laughs> Jude Law, you do know what you're drinking is meant for eye surgery. Okay. Um, and he kind of does that, and he kind of lets you rest for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and you're kind of sitting there with all these. you got about 20 different needles in your leg and everything. And some of them are all the way I mean, Bo's talking best he can. It's still a little weird, but he's, he's still yeah, talking. Yeah, I mean, it, it probably hurt the first time, but then after that, you kind of get used to it a little bit. Well, I yeah. remember because he did the one, and then he would feel nothing after that. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it basically after that first one... It, it starts to, you know, uh, as far as the, the, the whole, the puncturing part, you don't really feel it. And then you kind of just kind of sit there for a while and he kind of pulls out and he's got like a lollipop. He's kind of like, I'm uh, kind of sucking on everything. Kind of comes back over. So, um, is there any other, uh, while we're waiting on you to, just to see what happens, uh, any other things that you want to talk to me about? Well, I mean, it was since then that my health hasn't been as great, but I know you're into the herbal medicines and well, uh, the Chinese medicines and philosophy just kind of finds it fascinating, you know. I'm kind of curious about some of that that you learned. I mean, oh, open yeah. mind is an open book, easy to read, but it's very much what I think. I was, I was, uh, I've said a little bit about any other medical problems you might have. Oh, I. I Ah, uh, well, I got my own sheep's bladder right there. What were you? <laughs> my condom. Oh, your condom? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Okay. That's, that's like a, I'm always wrapped. <laughs> uh, I'm like, well, what do you mean? Well, when was the last time you actually had a full physical? Oh, last Tuesday. night. I was going to say Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> By any licensed professional? Or... I think her name was Daisy. <laughs> Oh, yes, Daisy. Yes, a prostitute. Oh, yes, I'm well acquainted with her. Oh, yes, she is well, not. You, you see, I actually, many of your clients are some of my best customers. <laughs> Quit wrecking them. I see. So is there anything start... else you want to tell me about your current health situation? Well, is there something I should know? You, you having any other issues? Oh, any, a little bit of water? leakage? I look, I don't know. You tell me, Doc. Not really, but... Okay. Kevin, Kevin Whitemore on Facebook just said, Woot! Woot! Hey, Kevin! Woot. Or wool. It's wool. Me. Not yeah. wool. Yeah. yeah. Wool. 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 Question mark. Yeah. Your, your sheets can... No. Oh, it is. <laughs> Uh, you know, he kind of kind of asks you a few other questions, you know, like uh, <clears throat> dizziness, eyesight problems. Oh, we want to buy syphilis. Any, uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, I, I've had that before, but it cleared up and disappeared. I don't know. You, you had it before? Yeah. And it cleared up on its own? Well, I did take some interesting stuff from some Indian, but... Oh, really? Well, what did you take? I have no idea. <laughs> well, who was it you took it from? I have no idea. <laughs> but he said if you ever saw me in the village again and touched any teepee, I'd be a dead man. <laughs> Uh, he grabs a couple of the needles, starts pulling them out. I, I, I'm serious. Hey, I don't know what it was. <laughs> well, if you do have any problems, you probably should check back with me. Well, I wouldn't mind being cured anyway. I've kind of had a change of heart in late, couldn't I? That was a bit of an escape for me, of sorts. For how many years? Most of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Surprising you haven't caught something yet. Pull that another needle. Well, I've always been lucky. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, he goes ahead and pulls out the rest of the needles and everything and kind of wipes off her leg with like some alcohol. Yeah. You know, he just, he actually probably just gyps it in the same one that's got your blood. Yeah. You know, and just kind of wipes it off and everything and dries it. Am I supposed to drink some tiger penis or something? <laughs> well, if you're trying to cut back, then no, I said. <laughs> oh, I won't give a word. I remember what powders and other jaws he had all about. He goes, well, why don't you get up and try and walk around a little bit? All right. <laughs> um, I have to blow my third leg for that. It seemed, it seemed pretty relaxed while you were there. It seemed pretty relaxed while you were there. Uh, as you're kind of walking around. It feels it feels better, but you're not too sure. It's one of those things. I think it feels better, but yeah. you really don't know. I just had twenty needles sticking yeah. out my leg. He kind of he kind of examines it a little bit. Gets you head, go back on the table. He does a few more of those exercises. He does kind of kind of feel like he's almost like massaging you away. Uh -huh. But as he's moving you, he's kind of like trying to feel what your muscles are doing a little bit. You know, and he goes, "Well, this is sort of the start to see." Um, Maybe give it a week and then we'll come back and we'll try again. It may not take right away. Sometimes if something like this has been, been this way for a long time, for several years, it's not something that's really easy to get rid of, to cure. Well, so it may, take, it may take a lot of sessions to, to, to really help ease it up a little bit. Well, that's fine. I more wanted to speak with you than, you know, if I wanted a miracle, I'd go call, but you never know. Well, I'm not sure what um, your friend uh, Calm. Oh, yes, Calm, the, the preacher. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I'm not sure what. Well, I, I'm sure I wouldn't hurt praying to God, I suppose, if you were that kind of a person. But yeah. Well, I am now, well, sort of. Uh, well, that is a good thing. Yeah. It's a very good thing. Yes. Well, I've changed a few things. I mean, I might not be able to come back to you. So. Is there a particular reason why you can't? We're about to head south and probably die. <laughs> there may be a remedy for that. Yeah. I mean, if you don't, don't go, go south. <laughs> well, you are a good doctor. <laughs> I try to be. Hey, well, hey. Well, if you, have, you, know, a, if you have a beverage yeah, or tea of some that. sort of strangeness, I'll, I'll tell you the tale quickly. Oh, uh, I suppose. What tale are you going to tell me? Well, while we're going south. Oh, well, uh, all right. If you really insist on telling me this tell, uh, sure. Todd, I'm trying. Uh, Tom on Facebook said, so glad to see you guys are having fun. Wish I had more time to join you. Really miss playing consistently. Oh, yep. Who is it? Todd. Todd. Talk oh, our Todd? Yep. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Awesome. Todd. Hi, Todd. Hey, Todd. Todd. Where Todd. you are? The, try to your YouTube in a few days. They're going to post it up there. Yeah. See the whole thing. Uh, he kind of goes and uh, probably get something to drink and everything. Um, and then he probably asks you, want a vodka? Do I have to? No, but you, you, you can set, you can set them on the table if anybody wants one. If anybody wants one. He's my son sucker. <laughs> I, I refuse to be your fluffer, okay? <laughs> I will take a sucker. Okay. I'll take a blue one. I'll buy it, sure. They're ten dollars a piece. <laughs> and laced with LSD. Yeah. It's <laughs> almost cheaper than the freaking Girl Scout cookies. Almost <laughs> like the telegram. 
<laughs> so, uh, we are back to Halloween you know, three years ago. It, do you want to role play that okay. part out, or you just want to paraphrase it? Or? I will paraphrase this for time. Okay. Yeah. But, um, pretty much, I kind of tell him the whole tale. I do have tale telling. Okay. So, I'll try and do that. I got a nine. Okay. Uh, and yeah, actually, I guess he is kind of connected in a way because Maria. Uh, yeah, and I, does. I, then I, I tell him too, it's like just so you know all that happened. Mm -hmm. You know what happened with that situation with her. Yeah, That's kind of why I want to tell him too. Okay, so. Aaron, do you already have a sucker? So, um, and he does kind of tell you that <laughs> he's been working with too. Maria. She's kind of got one. It's been kind of strange, you know. Uh, just a turmoil, turmoil, right? Of what happened, but he's been kind of working with her, and uh, she's. And I thought that might help you, baby. Help you in the helps. Well, very much could. Uh, when you guys return, let me know what happened. You know, if if you live, that is. Yeah, I don't really know, but given the power of probably these people, I don't. Know. I mean, I have friends of the court down there. If they'll still aid with me, they sort of owe me after I brought in the well, one of the most wanted. Never really got recompense for that, so I need to look them up. I am not know what you're referring to when you mention this court, but uh, I'll take your word for it. Well, I'm talking about Huxtas. No, I'm talking about my brave friend. Yeah. Well, he doesn't necessarily, you don't know if he knows anything about Huxtas. Yeah, so I do say that. Say okay. Talking about Huxtas. Uh, you get out. <laughs> you mean like calling artists and such? Well, a little more than that. You hear magic? Oh, 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 really. it's magic. Oh, well, I know of uh, the strange phenomenons and such. Probably know the team more than anything. Well, most of us keep it a secret, but you seem to be a man of the world. Kind of surprised you don't know much about it. Well, if you are such a magician, why are you limping around? <laughs> well, it's all what the Manitows allow you to do or love. And these Manitow are what? People call them demons. I call them... Beings from another dimension. He goes and gets a piece of paper, write something down. You might want to go see this. As he person. turns around, <laughs> I'm gonna call it cat. What are you trying to do? Freak this guy out? Yeah, yeah. Which <laughs> he set you on fire with rubbing alcohol. By the end of the day, you see Bo being burnt, <laughs> hunted through the streets. Works with some pitchforks. Here's the smarts. Let me show you how to shadow walk here in a few minutes. In a room without when shadows. I, when I get to get it to here, work. Blow out the candle. Are you looking? Are you still looking? I haven't moved yet, have I? Ooh, look at a pair. You can't see you. Mm -hmm. You can't see you. That's right. You know, it sucks. I don't have his character sheet with him. It's yeah. I didn't put it on an actual character. It's just written in the other story. Oh right. I don't think I brought it. No, I didn't. Oh, didn't do it. <laughs> <You> did <not. laughs> I'd call them spirits from another world. Get ya. And but what I am I gonna try this one? He's writing down right now. Their phone was off the hook. Disability in leg. Reoccurring syphilis. Delusional. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously touched. Burning the arteries. I prescribed laudanum. <laughs> yeah. A lot of laudanum. So I, I, I try the impossible then, but I do do false face. So when he looks up again, I look it's like I look like myself, but much different. Maybe a little closer to him. But it's kind of obviously. Does he? Does he have? Does he get to make any rolls? Yeah. So and let me look up. Impossible. And then I have to kind of remember what the hell he had. I know he had a high cog and he had high smarts and Time high knowledge. <laughs> Here's a cowboy with the star. Hmm? Roy Rogers? Or the Indian with the star. Remember that? Mm -hmm. No, well, that... place lets the caster do a few simple elements of facial pictures. Changes include changing the hair or eye color, adding or removing a mustache or a beard, changing the hair length, such, and it provides plus two disguise. It's Fabio! <laughs> 
He's still got us won't fool a determined observer, but it may allow the huckster to pass from a casual glance. Oh, you can watch right doing your So it's kind of like mm -hmm. you can watch right doing your business. It, it's like suddenly a flashlight, right? my hair is like a dark brown. Mm -hmm. Now, what is said about fool the casual? It'd it, it be feel a disguise roll. So he would just have to roll his cog to basically see through. So what would be your difficulty, though? What would be the difficulty? It's my disguise versus that. So roll your disguise then. Yeah. So it's basically allowing you to have a free disguise kit. Pretty like much. A quick, quick, easy disguise kit. 20, 27. Ooh, wow. That is pretty good. But he could almost interpret it like suddenly I threw a wig on with this logic. Oh, no, yeah, I already thought about that. Uh, he rolled 11 was the highest okay so yeah he kind of kind of looks kind of a kind of a not amazed but his eyes kind of do that open up wide mm -hmm. kind of steps over towards you and kind of leans in mm -hmm. then he kind of grabs your cheeks and start going <laughs> like this i let him <laughs> and goes uh, probably kind of pulls on your hair or kind of runs his hands yeah. through his hair he gives you and a then kind of goes like that <laughs> yep Oh, you can keep them. <laughs> he goes, well, that is rather amazing. Well, it is, but it's also highly dangerous. Highly dangerous. I could die doing it. Then why do it? Well, humans love the thrill. They love power. Yeah, it's the power. And is that something you're interested in, power? I was at one point in my life, but now I'm using it to me or less... Fight fire with fire. If mm -hmm. I end up dying from doing it, I'm doing it for the right reasons. Well, that's something you're telling me, but is that something that perhaps you are convincing yourself of? Oh, I am all every day. Well, something to think about. Uh, but something for you too, and if he can't kind of glance as well, tell off. He spell. probably does, though. Do you always use your cane? Yeah. And he goes in your cane, yeah. and you notice I, that's kind of my cards. So when I do yeah, spell, yeah, that's why he kind of yeah. points down at the tip of your cane. Yeah, and he kind of end that. You might say it's because he did. He does notice that you. And did I that. did it once before, and he shook up the dirt when I did it. I made a pattern. And oh, from it. last time. Okay. And you notice he kind of. What were you trying to do then? I, I was trying to do like silver tongue devil or something. And oh, that's right. And then he saw it, and then like as I walked, he walked by. He covered up the pattern, and I got all freaked out because he knew I was a huckster. Oh, well, you... okay. Uh... And then it was kind of that thing where I'm like, I think he already knows that I'm a huckster. I'm just reaffirming him. So that's where I'm because going. Because I don't that. have his character sheet here. Yeah. Nothing changes. Yeah. He could be playing you still. Yeah, I know. But I'm just trying to but... confirm. I'm like, well, I am. Yeah, that's what happens when you don't play regularly all the yeah, time. But yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, no, but he does seem genuine, like, maybe he does it. Uh, scrutinize him if you want. Okay. Again, I can't really, just, just let me know if you get a high number. I got a three. Okay. You're not too sure. He yeah. seems, he seems to be generally... Well, he got, he's got a really good poker face, so... Yeah, he does have a pretty good poker face. Uh, but he oh, does seem oh, to be oh, kind of, off. kind of like, uh, this is kind of taking him off. Yeah. Lady Gaga. Even back. more by, by surprise that you did something like that, but more surprised <clears throat> why you might have even bothered to show him this. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, he goes, well, I don't have anything else for you for your leg. It'll just be, uh, the acupuncture. Okay. Because there's really nothing else I can give you that would help. No herbs or other stuff or something? Not unless you have a different reason for drinking them. Upset stomach? Diarrhea? Nausea? Diarrhea? Well, I've had a sort of a weakness ever <clears throat> since then, you know. A weak? What kind of a weakness? Well, I used to be, my vigor used to be much higher. How old are you? I am, uh, 600 years old. <laughs> I think he's like 42, I think. Yeah, it's called old age. Yeah. <laughs> well... No, he does say that. It's called old age. No, I mean, after the... After leaving the military, I just was a lot weaker. I dropped a die type. 
So. Yeah, that's called not exercising. <laughs> Top to die time. Yeah, well, I don't perform quite as well as I used to in the bed. Will you please give me drugs? <laughs> Well, what uh, what kind of drug? If you're asking me for laudanum, then no, I am not giving you any of that. Oh, damn it! That stuff is nasty. All right, I am. and I also recommend staying away from it and don't ever trust a snake oil salesman. But where do you get the oil? <laughs> My God, he squeeze the shit out of snake. Whatever, wherever you can get it. <laughs> Same way you get baby oil, you squeeze the shit out of babies. <laughs> How do you suck in your sleep, son? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dennis. I had to do it. He just looks so. <laughs> I don't even need to suck this thing. <laughs> you, know, you look so cool. I had to say something. You're just like. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it looks like he's got the cigarette in his mouth. Yeah, he just stared like. Yep. Mm -hmm. Gosh. Well, I'm not there. I'm just patiently waiting. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I, I basically uh, I give him twenty dollars for the people for the tent city. Oh, okay. Yeah, Donation. Yeah. Okay. Well, I hope we can have those are conversations, maybe. Well, like I said, when you get back, stop on in and we'll give you another treatment. All right. So try and stay alive. I will. Oh, that's actually through twenty dollars for the donation. You owe me three dollars for the visit. Just give. Oh, that was just to let me in the door. Oh, that's right. It was a free thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, he still says that, but until you say that, and it's like, oh yes, I forgot. The next oh. time, though, it'll be $3. Oh, I'll give you $3 for crying out loud. No, Here's five. No, I forgot. Don't worry. Here's your $3. So. $2. You will depart from there so I can go over to these guys. Yep. Um, you I guys. Run from there. I'll treat that for $2. <laughs> like for a scale. You guys are all headed over it's towards. Are like you guys all headed over towards the boat in the morning? <laughs> okay, you're taking your horse. Okay. I'm probably traveling with him if he's going in the morning. Yeah, and you're going to go there, too, in the morning. I'll catch up soon after. Okay. Uh, you guys head on down uh, to the Jezebel, um, and it's basically... Lily <laughs> Carla, Carla Lily. Well, it hasn't been renamed yet. He um, just found out about it last night. So, um, they wasn't expecting you to actually leave, you know, so soon. <laughs> Change the name. Come on. Um, We're leaving. <laughs> Basically, you kind of go over and you you see your boat and everything. Uh, you can see that the Gatling gun has been remounted up on top. Or at least you assume it is. There's like a tarp kind of thrown over right. top of it. Right. Um, and you can see... Uh, is this a steam-powered boat? Yeah, it's yeah. steam-powered. It's got a boiler. Okay, it's not yeah. Ghost Rock. Though. I make note of that. Um, That's fine. And uh, It will be eventually. You can see uh, there is a guy up on deck, uh, kind of moving around, kind of moving some stuff, basic things. He seems to kind of have a little bit of trouble uh, getting around. Uh, he seems like an older guy. He's got one of those, you know, like the Popeye sailor hat yeah. type thing. He's one of those. It's just kind of like a dark blue or something. Well, before I step on the, the one, more, one more down, I'm, I'm just kind of describing what you see as right. you come up. We're on a dock, right? It's packed yeah. with a dock. Yeah. Uh, before I get on the boat, I'll. Uh, oh shit, I forgot what to say. Tired. Hail. Hail. Satan. <laughs> Satan. Hail, Captain. Uh, what the fuck his name is? Uh, it was O'Donnell, I believe. Hail, Captain O'Donnell. Uh, he kind of turns. <laughs> oh shit, Togar's here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, slouch Mike cap, that's what I called it. Mike left the Togar, should have. <laughs> Yeah, you told what, me. What, I'm sorry? Uh, slouch cap, that's what I kind of call it. Slouch cap, yeah. Uh, so he's about 5'8", 170 pounds, uh, wavy white gray hair uh, that has thinned out, out quite a bit, but not going bald. Uh, very wrinkly uh, and a sun-worn face with dark eyes. Uh, probably as he kind of turns around, you kind of see him squint quite a bit. You can kind of see where you're at and everything. Um, he's got a gray mustache. Uh, that's pretty much left untrimmed and then just a grizzled face. Um, yeah, as you kind of, as he kind of turns around, he kind of limps forward a little bit and he goes, well, Hi, how can I help you with? Kevin. Uh, Kelvin Crouch Cal and uh, Company. He kind of thinks for a moment and he's like, Ah, uh, the crew of this, or uh, the owners of the boats. Hi. Uh, 
for Mr. Felix. Ah. Yes, sir. Come on up. All my stuff up and... Okay, you kind of come on up on deck. Well, actually, I'll leave my stuff on the dock and then walk up. And okay. Shake his hand. Okay, you kind of you kind of come up. You can see, uh, he's just got like normal short boots, and then uh, the pant legs they kind of go down so they drag right on the floor. But as he kind of as you're coming up and he kind of steps through, you can see he's really limping really heavily, okay. and he kind of reaches up. Oh, All right, it's nice to meet you. Oh, uh, Seamus, Seamus will do it. Shake his hand. It's his third. Joey like shakes back to me, thing. He goes, uh, <laughs> we still got some more preparing to do. I, uh, I, uh, we came down here to uh, give you a hand with it. I have to know what's the poop Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> me and the good reverend here are, uh, he's going to put his horse on the you know, on deck, too, then. You know, I'm yeah. limping. Yeah. Boston. Yeah, he kind of looks over and kind of nods to you. He goes, uh, well, there are probably a few errands that we could be running. I still don't have a full load of coal. <laughs> Just tell me what you need to do, so I'll be happy to help him. Uh, he kind of kind of runs down kind of the list of a few things. Most of it's just like... Uh, <laughs> I just kind of touch some extra stuff. Fish out of the tank. Yeah. <laughs> Scrape the bottom of the feet. boat while it's in the river. Need yeah. a toilet scrub. <laughs> you know. I'll take, a, I'll take a copy of the list. And, and he's, he's like, uh, do you want to bring some of your stuff on up? Aye, sir. Yeah, you, you go ahead and bring them on up. You stow them wherever you wish. Uh, are you bringing the horse then? Aye. Aye. Okay. He goes, well, probably need to uh, pick up some hay and feed for it. And maybe... Uh, a few posts that we can mount so we can hitch her, uh, or not hitch her, but um, cobble, her, cobble her so she doesn't go running off or anything like that. You can take care of that, can't you? Pull off. But for right now, you can you can either just leave the horse on the deck on the dock there for right now, whatever. Um, you can roll um, your cogs. Uh, difficulty probably nine. <laughs> <laughs> He's hero. <laughs> Ten. Ten. And what about you? Nine. Okay. Well, uh, uh, key invulnerable. Huh? Key invulnerable. Oh, yeah, key. Yeah, plus two. If you I got two. Two. Eleven. Okay. Oh, you need to roll for nightmares. Oh, from last night. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll do that tonight. Okay. Okay. We'll give you a break. So I got twelve. Just remind me. Hopefully tonight we'll remember. Um, you can hear uh, down from below, probably from the where the engine is. Uh, you can hear some clanking, like metal against metal. Kind of, they're, it's really low, but you can just you can hear. It sounds like somebody's down there. Which one of us? Um, on a side note, which between you and Kelvin, who has the more mechanically inclined, you are, aren't you? Well, I've got steam engineering. And, um, so do I, but well, uh, you, have, you and, can build and, a steam and, engine and mad, and mad science. Well, Tim and I worked together on steam stuff that one time. We were, oh, you bought when yeah, we were yeah, when yeah. we were checking that th- theater out. Remember, do you have tinkering, Dennis? Um, that's over and smart. I do. All the way to the right. Should... Yes, I do. Yeah. So, what levels do you have in built? Two. And what about your engineering? That's two. Okay. And two in mad science. What level you had in engineering? Two. So two. What do you have? Do you have anything? Six. Six. Six in engineering. Jesus Christ. Engineering in general, engineering. in general. Or... Wait, how did you? Did you? Steam how did you get okay, six? Yeah. Did you take? Did you spend that? Because six, you, you can only go up to five, and then you got to spend those extra points. Yeah, I did. Did I, you? I had okay. Pool, yeah. Okay. Because that, that's why I ended up pouring the steam wagon and all the stuff with it. Because I was okay. I was spending a lot of time with uh, uh, Lucer, uh, Leslie, Leslie, whatever. Leslie, and then Leslie. When we, when we when we started into that theater, that really peaked. Kelvin's interest in okay. well, Plus, you could have went down to the the uh, factory because yeah. they do. That's what they main thing they right. do there too. So that was just fascinating for him. So he just sucked it all in. Okay. Yeah. He sucked them all off. That <laughs> <worried>. points. <laughs> just as <add> both. <laughs> no, anyway. Uh, so what do you guys do? Well, I'm, I'm going to say. Uh, well, the good reverend, he is very good at his uh, construction and, and uh, machinery. 
Why don't you head down to the lower level there and see if that gentleman might need some help. I'll go take care of this list for us. He goes, uh... Uh, Seamus goes, uh... He goes, uh, that's the Albert down there. The Alzebub? Albert. Oh, Albert. And he goes, uh, he's a lad. He's, uh, very handy with engines. Because I wouldn't have too much worries about it. Yeah. Father can give him a hand. He's pretty good at it, too. He kind of shrugs and kind of goes back to what he's doing. All right, I'll be back in a moment. I'm going shopping. So, uh, you head on down, mm-hmm. down below. Um, they got rich queens and... Uh, so down there, uh, basically you do see a young boy. He's about 14 years old, about 4'10 in height, 110 pounds. Uh, he's got a moppy dust, mop, dusty blonde, brownish hair. Um, Go ahead. <laughs> Just shirt and trousers with like suspenders and shoes. Uh, you can see he's got nearby. He's got like a large satchel uh, that's not really hanging from him, but it's got a strap to be hanged from. Uh, he's basically just kind of going over. It looks like as you kind of come down, I guess you can roll your uh, roll your smarts uh, or just roll engineering, I guess. Oh, excuse me. Engineering or tinkering, whichever. Uh, Caitlin said hello. Um, hey, Caitlin. Hi, Caitlin. How's it going? Hey, hey Caitlin. Caitlin. Greetings, salutations, oh, and a language oh, you're familiar with. <laughs> <laughs> Why the chat didn't pop up? Make good girl. Who had? I'm full of shit. Okay. Uh, it looks like he's just doing again? some basic repairs. I was a poop type stuff. Uh, taking a few things out, checking them out, cleaning them and stuff. Um, and as you come down, let's see if he even notices you. His <laughs> <laughs> heart sack died. <laughs> okay. Um, roll your uh, scrutinize. He's wearing women's panties. Yeah. Yeah. He's red. made of women's panties. Oh, 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 God. With a mop for hair. <laughs> Frenzy man. Seven foot frame. Yeah. Rats upon his back. Um, you just make it tough that day. Is that King along with that? Or? King goes with that too. 13. 13. Okay. Um, you kind of see him. He kind of glances up. He definitely notices, notices you there mm-hmm. as you kind of come in, but then he just kind of goes back to whatever he's doing. Mm-hmm. I introduced myself. Hey, my old love, my old lips in. Kind of stops and kind of looks. Kind of nods at you. Mm-hmm. And then kind of goes yeah. back and starts doing what he was doing. Mm-hmm. One of the owners. I've uh, got uh, a background on uh, steam engineering. How's, she, how's the boiler looking? Uh, he kind of stops again. Kind of hands you up like a piece of piece of mechanical equipment there, you know, uh, something that maybe he just just took apart. It's a flashlight. Um, he just kind of hands it over to you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, roll, uh, roll your uh, either on tinkering or uh, yeah, maybe the port oh, Look what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Can you take a look at my crankshaft? Yeah. <laughs> what? Hydraulic oil works great. <laughs> it's what I call bad. It's better than chicken fat. <laughs> I'm six years old. You're like one of the top well, of the planet. Well, four. Four? No. <laughs> no, okay. I'm just saying. You're like, uh, well, you kind of look at it and you're like, okay, I kid, you just kind of have extra points. Thanks for handling no, no, this to me. Saying, you're like, and then he kind of kind of watches you for a minute, powers, and then he actually like, kind of takes uh, that out of your hands, <laughs> and then he kind of like pulls out like a maybe, maybe I'll re- oh, oh, or something, oh, and then he kind of tightens up, right right up on it. I was still and then he kind of goes ahead and puts that down and starts putting it back in and everything. Perfect. 
Oh, 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 uh, uh, <laughs> I've been fourth of baseball. <laughs> a nine or eleven. Okay. Oh yeah. So um, basically, if, if you just oh oh yeah, you mean the uh, you try to cover it up or you know that you didn't know the first time. Come on, or... in. come on in, come on. Kind of, yeah. Okay. Uh, do you have blood or anything? Like, do you have blood or anything? Like that? <laughs> yes. Go ahead and try. Six. Uh, let me see. He's got. If you knew Kellen was a was a secret genius. <laughs> now Felix has pretty much all the spells too. I can learn. Yeah, he's got a whole a whole library, so he can't find it. It's in there somewhere. Okay. He kind of you kind of kind of say something, you know, scientific. You know, you you do you kind of point out. What it was that he was pointing at, and you kind of, kind of try and cover it up a little bit, like, oh, oh, that, uh, well, I knew that, you know. And he just kind of glances up at you and kind of gives you a quizzical look. Just smile. <laughs> uh, he just like maybe after a while he might like point at something if you want to like help out or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you notice he never talks to you. He never says anything. And if you, you like say something, he just kind of gives you a look and he'll, if it's a yes or no, he'll nod his head, you know, or he'll point at something. He's a mute. Or he's, no. you know, touch. No, or I'm, you know, I'm not gonna pry at this point. Okay. So, uh, so basically you kind of work. He's probably not, you can roll your smarts. Go and roll your smarts. Who, me? No, him. <laughs> he guys doing all okay. the kids. Uh, well, he definitely <laughs> somewhere inside. Uh, right so now. he probably does have actually a high tinkering. Um, a joke or a and fortune he does seem to know it's basically engineering a little bit. You're not sure how much though. <laughs> this right. one's full of pudding. So, um, but yeah, Dark if you want to spend the rest yeah. of the time there, do you Should try and up. do you try and do anything else while you're there, other than? <laughs> You just, I know you said you kind of let I'll, it go for right I'll, now. I'll, I'll, I'm just going to kind of assist him and kind of kind of see how much he does know or whatever and kind of. Okay, so you kind of keep an eye on him while he's working. While yeah, he's I'm, I'm just kind of observing and qualifying him as uh, just my observation. Okay. And uh, if there's, uh, just while he's doing that, I'm watching over the equipment. Uh, and just seeing what he may not mess with. Okay. And if, if uh, there's something that he's uh, kind of avoiding, I will cursory observe it mm -hmm. uh, to see if maybe it does need some attention. Okay. You kind of do your own little thing. Yeah. Um, as far as you can tell, I mean, they've obviously been here actually for a while, kind yeah. of working on stuff and tinkering and stuff. They're not mm -hmm. upgrading or doing anything like that. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not changing stats or anything. Just, just maintaining. Um, but as far as you can tell, yeah. Cleaning, looks, greasing, moving. Yeah. It looks like they've been, <laughs> or he's been doing at least a pretty good job of it. You don't know mm -hmm. about the captain if he's involved in that or not. So, uh, but yeah, it does seem like it's, it's for what it is, for what the engine is and everything and what the boat is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's, it's in decent shape. So since the last time you guys tried to destroy it, you know, <laughs> you put a hole through it. So, kind of at the end of the day, after uh, we get the barber to do knock off or whatever, I just give him mm -hmm. an affirmation of appreciation. Okay. It looks like you've been doing a uh, good job uh, keep, keep, keeping the girl running here. He just kind of shrugs his shoulders. Um, you can roll scrutinize on one other thing. It's really okay. a girl. <laughs> Would be a turn. Uh, it's really a dragon. Okay. Uh, you do notice, uh, probably maybe during the day, he always makes sure that satchel is close by to him. And if you ever, like, get close to the satchel, he always kind of moves it away and everything. 
It's kind of that's his bag, and you do. Okay. He does seem to keep sure. tools and maybe some other stuff in there. So, um, <laughs> you're just going shopping, right, Rob? I'm just getting what's on the list. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you kind of do that stuff. What about you, Dale? Uh, after I get my stuff ready and go say goodbye to my wife, I'm gonna go down to the boat too. So I'll probably be there an hour or so. Right, we've only got now. Are you guys ever gonna stop or talk to Cobb or anything like that? Oh, is he back or? Because they're well, yeah, Olaf's back. He's back also, but you no. Know, as I said before, he was he was staying. He's staying at the 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 uh, banjo. Oh, blessed the banjo. banjo. Yeah, I'll probably go tell Cobb what's going on. Okay, I would definitely go let him know what's up. Okay, we'll kind of finish. We'll stop after we do this part. Though. Okay, um, you kind of go on down uh, the blessed banjo, and you actually kind of see him. Uh, he's uh, and it's actually now running. Uh, for the most part. Oh, okay. You know, it, it's all pretty much, it's finished. Um, yeah. Uh, Julius. Yeah. Is, had been working and doing some stuff when you guys went to Nashville. And so now they do, you do know they've, they've had kids coming in. And okay. Uh, it's still pretty early in the morning, though. They usually don't get going until just before lunch. And then yeah. that way, when they're there, they, they usually try and give the kids a lunch. Right. You know. Uh, but you can kind of see him uh, outside on the deck. Uh, he's got like a cup of coffee, and there's actually a coffee pot there. Okay. And probably a couple other mugs no. that are kind of turned over for like whenever Julius comes out or someone oh, right. comes over, yeah. he's got a mug, you know. Uh, but he's just kind of sitting out there, maybe kind of reading the newspaper or something. Okay. Well, uh, as you kind of come on up, he does kind of glance up, kind of tips his hat. Yep. I do the same. Morning, Cobb. Morning. Thought you should know, in case you're interested, uh, got a telegram last night from, uh, well, from what we can discern, it's from Philip Monroe, that journalist. The young boy, yeah. It was kind of weird. Felix said gremlins may have gotten to it, whatever that is. Mm. But Don't know what that is either. It was written backwards. All right. So we don't know if it was Philip Monroe trying to write some sort of code so nobody could figure it out, or if something happened to it, or if it was somebody trying to throw it the trail, but basically said, don't come to Natchez. He knows who you are. Natchez will come to you. Yeah, he knows He knows you by name. We're all, we're all in danger. But he found people of interest down there. So... Yeah, <clears throat> naturally we're going after him. <laughs> Since it said don't come, you're in danger. We're going. Because I hope you're not expecting me to go on down there with you. Yeah. I mean, as much as I do like that young lad, I just don't really feel like uh, my place to go down there right now. Well, that's fine. I'll just let you know we're going. So if we don't come back, you and Father Julius can find our bodies and give us last rites. And you can actually. There's a wagon kind of coming up. Okay. And he kind of says. Kind of stands up and he goes, uh, so I got something coming in. Like, here, come on over. All right. And he goes, uh, uh he goes, exactly, uh, well, and he goes, like, are you guys okay going off on your own? Well, I don't know if we can handle Bo, but we're okay going on our own. I mean, I admit, I don't really want to leave you guys hanging. But at the same time, I don't really feel comfortable leaving. Every time we do, every time we do, something else happens. Right. And he kind of goes, uh, there's the two guys kind of in the wagon. They kind of jump down and they kind of talk to them. They say a few words and they've got like a little pamphlet board they need them to sign. He's like, well, I want to see it first. Make sure it's all there. Okay. I'm kind of looking at the wagon. See what. Uh, it's what... just a nondescript wagon. Okay. And two. Two wagon smiths, or a wagon, whatever, handlers. Okay. You know, they look like they probably work for somebody in a shipping company or something, but okay. you don't know who. They don't have any names written down on it. No uniforms or anything? No, not really. Okay. Um, if you really wanted to, you could try and scrutinize the the board, you know, the the letter or the uh, paperwork that's on the oh, yeah, little would. board there. He would. It's Cobb. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> so, uh, so uh, it's all like small print. You know how to read and write, right? Yeah. Okay. Eleven. Huh. You do catch enough. Uh, the heading 
seems to be uh well the shipping it seems to be from one company but there's another section like where it's who's been shipping it and you kind of notice it's like montgomery guns or something montgomery guns <laughs> i'm like oh and he probably goes back and kind of pulls out a crowbar from their wagon and everything and he basically try lifts it breaks it open and basically starts kind of looking through there you kind of go over a look basically there's a couple of cases and he's just there's got winchesters some shotguns and some pistols and it looks like some boxes of ammunition and stuff okay. i was like thought you were just taught you, teaching them how to box god <laughs> <laughs> He goes, oh, it's best to be prepared. I figured out we had stashed this in that, uh... He kind of waits until those <laughs> other guys, guys walk away. kind of walk away a little bit. He goes, stash him up in that, uh, hallway. Oh. And you know, you guys made a secret door. Right. So right. you could go back in there. Right. And everything. Ooh, well, not Just bad. in case someone like Connor comes around again. Yeah. I can't imagine. We have a uh, weapon stash. <laughs> yeah. He goes, I can't expect Julius to hold off a whole bunch of people if by chance I'm not here. Right. That's good thinking. Uh, and then he kind of gives the order. goes, take it up to the second floor and just leave it up there. We'll take care of the rest. And then he kind of goes and signs the paperwork. Okay. Well, I'm glad you got your place up and running. Looks like it's doing pretty well for the kids. He goes, we'll seem to see. Things seem to be working pretty decent for right now. Good. Uh, I don't know why I'm talking like that, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we get back, we'll be sure to somehow mess it up for you. That <laughs> goes, uh. Well, I imagine the uh, boys will do all right. Oh, yeah. I'm sure we'll be fine. You yeah, know, just make sure you come back in one piece. We'll try. As long as Kelvin doesn't throw any dynamite too close to us, we should be all right. But yeah, don't tell him about this armor either. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his own anyway, no matter. Yeah. Well, that's, I don't think... that's what the steam wagon is. <laughs> 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 probably still take it. <laughs> Multiple armories in the group. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I understand that. Well, we're heading out later today, so take care of yourself, Cobb. We'll see you when we get back. If we need anything or whatever, maybe we'll try and send you a telegram. Keep you updated on... Well, I imagine going. if things get bad, I suppose you can send me a telegram, but uh, I'm not sure if I'll get there soon enough. Well, I don't know about things going bad, but at least let you know what's... Kind of keep you abreast of what's happening down there. In case there's anything you might need to know. Like, I'm the only one left, everybody else is dead, and he's coming for you, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah, I suppose I would appreciate yeah. that pretty much. <laughs> he kind of laughs and says, well, hopefully we don't have to send that telegram, but we'll keep in touch. All right, well, like I said, keep your head down. Be careful. Watch out for this um, Philip person. Philip kid. Yeah. He sounds like someone that likes to stick his head into trouble and not be able to take care of it. He might have already done that, so... Well, let's hope he has it. Yeah. Hopefully oh, and tell Bogart to stay away from the whole houses down there. I'll try. Pretty simple place. Manchez, right? And then maybe on to New Orleans, which is even probably more sinful. <laughs> I'll try and keep him on a short leash. All right, well, take uh, care. I'm not too worried about him. It's Olaf I'm worried about now. <laughs> his mother's recipe, whatever that was all about. Well, he's not Catholic, so I don't have to worry about him. <laughs> all right, Cobb. Well, you and Father Julius take care, and we'll we'll be back soon. Hope. All right. So uh, we'll go ahead and stop there. Cool. Yay! Yay. Thank you, Brad. Yep. <clears throat> Hope that was all right for beginning. Yeah, that's yep. good for me. Make sure to tune in every Tuesday as we try to roll out of these games. Check out our link tree at. Uh, just go to Link Tree and look at the Rocket Tour Society. Yep, that's us. Yoo-hoo! <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Yep. Check yep, out our thank YouTube. You. Check out everything. And we'll see you all next Tuesday. Bye. 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 Adios. Chacho. <laughs> <laughs>